I love Dragon Ball. No, seriously, like, I've been pretty obsessed with this franchise ever since I was a kid. Who remembers the good old days of the smug Goku profile pic? But if you do, then you're truly an OG. But back to what I was saying. Dragon Ball was a huge part of my childhood, and even my teen years and early adulthood. I mean, I grew up playing Dragon Ball PS2 games, watching DBZ on these shitty orange brick DVDs, which is basically the worst way to watch the show, but hey, they got the job done. And then Dragon Ball Super aired all throughout my high school days, until it finally ended a few months before I graduated. Okay, so long story short, you get the idea. I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. Pretty much have been my whole life. So what better a topic to cover in an iceberg video, right? Well, maybe not this, you might be saying, considering it has been done a few times, but hold that thought, because on YouTube's research tab, one of the most searched terms was Dragon Ball Iceberg, and it just so happens that I recently came across a pretty great one that I think nobody's covered before, because like most things I do on YouTube, it's insanely long. Over 300 entries of obscure Dragon Ball lore, games, trivia, rare collectibles, and merchandise, lost and rather unknown dubs, urban legends, conspiracies, theories, and much more. Also, spoiler alert for basically every Dragon Ball story ever told. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the definitive Dragon Ball Iceberg Explained. But before that guys, I'm finally an official YouTuber. It wasn't me hitting 100k subs, no, it's because this video is sponsored by Manscaped, the go-to when it comes to men's grooming products. And I've been wanting to work with them since day one, so this is a milestone right here. And today we've got the Performance Package 4.0, which comes with their latest lawnmower 4.0, their top of the line electric trimmer, the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is their ear and nose trimmer, the Crop Preserver, a ball deodorant so your balls don't stink, the Crop Reviver, a ball spray toner as well, I mean, your balls can never smell too good, am I right? And these really cool disposable shaving mats. But with this limited time offer, you can also get with this package for free, The Shed, a travel bag with a $40 value, and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxers. It also includes the Peak Hygiene Plan, giving you access to fresh blade refills and another product of your choice every three months for only $18.99, which can be cancelled anytime after. So hit the link in the description and use code SOURCEBREW at checkout and catch this amazing deal. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring Answering this video, now back to the iceberg. Tier 1 Dragon Ball Heroes we're starting it off with a really basic one here, the only still ongoing Dragon Ball anime series, which has been airing since July 1st, 2018, and besides the movies, this is the only new anime content that we get, which is, uh, yeah, not the greatest. It's a promotional anime advertising the card game and video games made for the same property, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, which is a lot bigger in Japan. There's also a manga, but the plots of these are essentially nonsensical, and they just cram as much fan service, villains, and fights into the episodes that they can, although occasionally they do have some pretty cool pieces of animation, but unless you're a really diehard Dragon Ball fan, there's not really a reason to watch this in my opinion. Not sure if that's a controversial take, but yeah. Just Goku and Vegeta and other fan favorite characters fighting random villains from old movies and arcs, as well as some new people you've never even heard of. The History of Trunks now this is something that's actually very good, Dragon Ball Z The History of Trunks, a TV special that aired in Japan in 1993 and tells the story of future Trunks and his struggles in his own timeline during the Reign of Destruction by Android 17 and 18, as well as him becoming the student of future Gohan, who is an adult now, before he loses his arm and is even killed by the androids, which makes Trunks turn into a Super Saiyan for the first time. It's based on a short special chapter from the manga and is a great adaptation and definitely a very very important part of the DBZ story. Akira Toriyama the man, the myth, the legend himself, the creator of the original Dragon Ball manga, the one who started it all. Evolving a gag series that was merely a very loose adaptation of Journey to the West, and progressing it into a series about aliens fighting other intergalactic aliens, robots, and even gods, taking it to the heights of being the most influential shonen manga and anime of all time, and probably around the world the most famous anime of all time, or at least one of them. But he actually started Dragon Ball after making Dr. Slump, which was a very popular Shonen Jump manga in Japan in the early 80s, and actually Dragon Ball first started as Dragon Boy in 1983 for only two issues. But that's a topic for a little later, before Dragon Ball eventually was serialized in 1984, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Tarble. 
Just gotta say real quick, did every major character really need a brother? Like we already got Goku's evil brother Raditz, Frieza's even more evil brother Cooler, Beerus's fat brother Champa. Like I'm not really sure Vegeta really needed a secret sibling as well, but regardless he does. At least according to the Yosung Goku special where he is introduced. But this isn't exactly canon, although they do reference him in Dragon Ball Super Broly so I guess he really is canon now. But he's very different from Vegeta, he's much more polite than his older brother, he's also even shorter than him somehow, and honestly bears a strong resemblance to Kaba. He also doesn't have his brother's atrocious hairline, so I guess that's a plus. Apparently he was also sent away from Planet Vegeta before its destruction, and since has married an alien named Gure. Power levels are BS. A truer statement has never been stated. Most Dragon Ball fans know this at this point, at least if you've watched DBS. You could argue there are some questionable moments in DBZ, but nothing like what happens in Dragon Ball Super. I can't name every instance because we will literally be here all day, but anything post Battle of Gods basically makes no sense at all, and you kinda just have to roll with it. And the entire Golden Frieza saga is a prime example, like bruh. Frieza catching up to Goku and Vegeta at this point does not make sense in any way at all. Even achieving a golden form should not be able to compete with Super Saiyan God, let alone Super Saiyan Blue, literal God Key. But that's not even the most egregious instance, because you also have Frieza destroying Gohan in his first form. Yes, that happened. To be fair, I can't remember if it was the movie or the TV version, but still the fact that they actually animated that is crazy to me. Uh, so a uh, quick note here, it's actually in both versions and both are absolutely terrible. I'll go a little further in on this in a different entry coming up soon, but uh, yeah, yikes. It's even worse than I remember. Then there's all the shenanigans in the TLP, and uh, yeah, I don't think I really have to go too deep into that. I've just learned to accept that power levels and power scaling more so as a whole can no longer even make sense. Given the heights that Goku and Vegeta reached even back at the end of DBZ and at the start of DBS. However, this entry actually just refers to power levels and not power scaling, so that rambling was more so just me needing to vent about DBS's power scaling. But in terms of actual power levels, we haven't used those in quite some time, but you could argue that the jumps that were made during the Frieza saga kind of don't make any sense at all either, and I wouldn't really fight you on that. I mean, Goku goes from like a power level of over 8,000 during the Saiyan saga, and reaches 150 million a short time later after unlocking Super Saiyan, which if you think about it, is an insane increase. But you gotta factor in the Super Saiyan multiplier of 50 times, and so you're actually left with a base power level of about 3 million. Still insane, but not as bad, I guess. Plus, with everything he went through during that arc, I'm gonna say it was well earned. Censorship. Being that Dragon Ball became such a popular series, it's no surprise that it was broadcast in many countries other than Japan, many countries which aired the show on children's networks because it's a cartoon, right? And one that a lot of kids really liked, including myself. So a few of the more, let's just say, vulgar and graphic scenes were changed on certain networks for Dragon Ball and more specifically Dragon Ball Z where there are numerous examples. Moments of characters flipping each other off, mentions of the word hell, which we'll get into in its own entry, many instances of graphic violence and blood, such as with the death of Goku and Raditz and Vegeta decapitating Guldo, and even with Nappa killing civilians in the Saiyan Saga. And there are many other examples, and a lot of the changes differ based on which dub or edit you're looking at. And the saddest part of all, to be honest, is how modern Dragon Ball just isn't as raw as DBZ used to be, because nowadays blood is extremely rare. I actually can't even remember the last time there was blood in DBS, except for that one scene with Piccolo in Superhero. Goku vs Superman the age-old question, who would win in a fight, Goku or Superman? People have been having this debate since, well, ever. It's funny because basically anytime Goku gets a new transformation or power boost, this discussion comes up all over again. Now I'm no Superman expert, but from the various discussions and videos on this topic in the past, it seems Superman is like infinitely strong, so he usually ends up on top, but with the advent of Ultra Instinct, maybe things change a bit here, but I don't know. Still though, it's good fun to see fanboys from either side melt down when their favorite character loses. Always a good time. Dragon Ball Evolution 
One of the most infamous things to come out of the entire Dragon Ball franchise. The live action American adaptation, which you already know was going to be terrible before you even watched it, but had to do it anyway, and god it's terrible. Like everyone knows at this point, but wow, it was just so bad. It's just one of the weirdest movies and anime adaptations ever. As if any anime adaptations are good, but still. Like Piccolo is the villain here and this is what he looks like. Don't worry though, the actor who played him, James Marsters, redeemed himself in the best way possible. And I know I keep saying this, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Also, no Krillin in this movie, by the way. Bruh. Also, some of the strangest CGI and fight choreography ever put to screen. All that being said, if you're a Dragon Ball fan and you haven't seen this, count yourself lucky, but at the same time, maybe grab a few friends and just laugh and cringe at this absolute mess of a film. Sonic Parallels Sorry Sonic fans out there, but we gotta talk about it. The Sonic games over the years, um, let's say have just borrowed a few concepts pretty obviously from Dragon Ball, but we can just call them inspirations. The biggest one is probably the Super Sonic transformation, which uh, yeah, pretty obvious where that came from. And then you also have the 7 Chaos Emeralds inspired by the 7 Dragon Balls, and everyone's favorite edgelord anti-hero Sonic the Hedgehog aka Vegeta 2.0. Then there's some more subtle ones, kind of, like Silver the Hedgehog, a dude with silver hair sent from the future to stop the destruction of a different timeline. Sound familiar to anyone? Yeah, that's your boy Trunks. I'm sure there's more similarities, but those are the main ones that I saw, but to be fair, what franchise didn't take at least something from Dragon Ball in the 90s and early 2000s? Battle of Gods and Resurrection F anime slash film differences. Okay, so here's a pretty big one. I already addressed one of the key differences in the Resurrection F anime and movie, where Gohan gets one-shotted by Frieza in first form in the movie, which thankfully they didn't put in the anime, because even they knew that that power scaling was, for lack of a better term, disturbing. So they fixed it, right? Actually no, they did something even worse. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Both the Golden Frieza arc and Battle of Gods have changes from the movie screen to the anime. To be fair though, Battle of Gods changes aren't as drastic in my opinion. Sure, everything is stretched out longer, including the fight with Goku and Beerus, which I'm sure no one is shocked by, and Bulma's party takes place on a ship instead of at her house. Vegeta gets to be more of a clown in the TV version, but mostly everything stays the same. Although, gotta say this, the movie is just 1000 times better in basically every single way. They did add subtle hints for Ultra Instinct, and left out a few lines from the film that implied Beerus is a lot weaker than we thought. Resurrection F, however, is very different, especially the early parts, and with this one, I can't decide which version is worse, which is not a good sign. But yeah, remember when I said Frieza destroyed Gohan in his first form? Well, when I went back to the actual scene in the anime, it was a lot worse than I thought. Frieza was in his first form, and Gohan was a Super Saiyan. Let that sink in. Holy f this was bad. This is the TV version, the quote unquote definitive version, the one that was trying to fix the movie's mistakes. Whoops. Then don't even get me started on the whole Ginyu situation. Captain Ginyu was one of my all-time favorite Dragon Ball Z characters. Such an underrated and cool villain, and I'm so mad that they brought him back into Dragon Ball Super just to embarrass him. Like, bruh. He body changes with Tagoma, which I don't even want to go down that power scaling rabbit hole, just to get one-shotted by Vegeta. Cool, dude. At least Vegeta did technically get to kill every member of the Ginyu Force now though, but yeah. If you couldn't tell, I'm not much of a fan of this arc or the movie. Also, I think Piccolo dies or something in the TV version, I don't even know. But the biggest thing was in the movie version, Goku is shot and caught off guard by Sorbet's laser gun in Super Saiyan Blue, which after everything we've talked about so far, doesn't even really do anything for me. Yes, it's very dumb and I'm glad they at least made him in base form in the anime, but with all the other dumb stuff they did in the TV version, honestly the movie is probably better because of course I didn't even talk about the animation side of things because that's a whole other rabbit hole. Journey to the West Inspiration Briefly mentioned this earlier, but yes, some people might be surprised to learn that the Dragon Ball manga was heavily inspired by an old Chinese novel called Journey to the West, which is a fictionalized account of a real Chinese monk, which is really interesting when you think about where the story would head. But let me know if this sounds familiar to those who have read or seen OG Dragon Ball. A monkey boy with a tail and a staff, a monk, a pig man, and a rival travel together fighting various foes and training to become stronger. 
but obviously the series quickly took on its own story beats, characters, and world building, and evolved into something completely unrecognizable from what it started as, a Journey to the West inspired gag series about a monkey boy named Goku, his friend Bulma, his shape-shifting friends Oolong and Puar, and Yamcha, who is the rival in this case. How the mighty have fallen. To think that Yamcha once held the title of Goku's rival. Yeah, it didn't last long, but I'm sure he still holds on to that achievement to this day. Back Tingle. One of the worst things to come out of modern Dragon Ball, and I will die on that hill. This refers to a concept introduced in Dragon Ball Super with the Universe 6 Saiyans, more specifically Caulifla, who uses this quote-unquote technique to achieve Super Saiyan basically instantly with no challenge whatsoever. This was a very bad decision by Toriyama or whoever wrote this, like I don't understand why they couldn't just have already had Super Saiyan and even Super Saiyan 2. That would have just solved a lot of people's gripes about these two characters. Scratch that, three characters getting everything our Saiyans worked so hard for, basically for free and with no real effort. It's just really kind of insulting given what Trunks, Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta went through to become Super Saiyans. Although you could argue Goten and Trunks getting it is when it became a Super Saiyan bargain sale, but still, a tingly back? That's the best they could come up with? Yeah, I just try to pretend this never happened. Dragon Ball Z Kai Dragon Ball Z Kai is complicated. Not on paper, actually. In fact, it's designed to make the DBZ viewing experience easier for newcomers, cutting out the filler portions and cutting down a 291 episode anime to only 167 episodes. It also has an all new English dub, which many people prefer over the original, and it's hard to argue that Sean Schemmel, Chris Sabat, and the others didn't improve their craft since the original Funimation dub. But I'm kind of split on this version of the show. It's an easy recommendation for newcomers over the original and people who just want to see the original story without the incredibly long and obnoxious filler, but also some of the original dub is better honestly in my opinion. Like a few scenes cannot be replicated, like the original SSJ3 transformation by Sean. Don't get me wrong, he did great in Kai, but there's just something magical about that original scene. Call it nostalgia glasses or whatever, but I feel that way about a lot of scenes actually. Also there are a few voice changes which I don't think are as good. Again, the original Captain Ginyu by Bryce Armstrong is unbeatable. And it's an easy decision when it comes to this part of Namek for me. But it's not always so cut and dry. A lot of the dialogue is improved to accurately tell the story of Toriyama's vision and the Dragon Ball manga, so no more of the superhero Goku effect. Which was something caused mostly by the original Funimation dub. Also though, for some reason, they also try to like redraw over certain scenes and it just looks weird, like it doesn't even match the original animation at all. And it just really stands out. Not sure why they did this, honestly. There's also a lot more censoring because it was actually aired on Nicktoon, surprisingly. But overall, it's a great way to watch the show, especially if you don't want to sit through almost 300 episodes or look at a filler guide. But still, they should have left in the Piccolo Goku driving test episode, that should be considered just canon at this point. AF Series this refers to the mythical sequel of Dragon Ball GT, which has had quite the fabled story. It all started with this infamous image of what people believed was Super Saiyan 5 Goku, which we'll get into a little bit later, and was drawn by an artist known as Tablos, an interesting character in his own right, but basically it was just fan art and nothing more. However, the rumor of this new series spread with this image as proof of its existence. Some believed it to be called Dragon Ball AF, standing for After Future or Another Future. However, this was of course all a Hoax, but that didn't stop some other artists from jumping in and making some of their own fan works as well, including Young Gigi and most interestingly Toyotaro, the man who would go on to illustrate the new Dragon Ball Super manga. It's over 9,000. Everyone's favorite meme from like 2007. I bet a lot of the people watching this aren't even old enough to remember this. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. But the point is, this was at one point Dragon Ball's biggest meme for sure. It's that iconic scene of Vegeta crushing his scouter after Nappa asks what Goku's power level is, and he exclaims, It's over 9,000! What? This is, of course, not the standard Funimation dub that most people recognize today. It is actually the Ocean Productions dub, an earlier one for the series with Brian Drummond voicing Vegeta in this scene and giving the iconic exaggerated performance here that made this meme what it is. Also, as a lot of Dragon Ball fans now know today, this is actually a mistranslation of the original Japanese, because he was actually meant to say over 8,000, which was later changed in Dragon Ball Z Kai, but come on, now at this point it's just iconic, you kinda gotta go with the 9,000 version. Another cool side note though, in the Dragon Ball Super dub, Brian Drummond would go on to officially voice the clone Vegeta in the Copy Vegeta Saga. Totally not Mark, copyright strikes. 
Totally Not Mark is a pretty big anime and Dragon Ball YouTuber who went through a bit of a situation with Toei, the company behind Dragon Ball, doing copyright takedowns on many of his Dragon Ball reviews and other videos that, might I add, were very transformative in nature, setting a dangerous precedent for anime reviewers, especially for Dragon Ball and One Piece. And this was a pretty big deal, even being covered by bigger YouTubers like Moist Critical, with basically everybody standing behind Mark in trying to get these videos reinstated. And thankfully, quite a while later, some of these videos were actually put back up on his channel. And since then, I don't think he's had as much trouble when it comes to showing Toei anime footage. I mean, he just recently did a huge retrospective on Dragon Ball Z's various arcs, which I actually listened to while making this video. These are great, by the way. But yeah, definitely a sad situation, but eventually worked out for the most part. Apparently also, since this incident occurred, YouTube has updated their copyright guidelines so that hopefully an attack of this magnitude doesn't happen again. A Hero's Legacy this is a TV special released in 1997 for Dragon Ball GT, and is a prequel to the final episode of the series which takes place a hundred years after the main story, and follows the adventures of Goku Jr. and Pan who is now over a hundred years old at this point. In the end, Goku Jr. meets the real Goku, and he hands him a Dragon Ball and explains how to use them to make his wishes come true. It's nothing too crazy, but it's definitely pretty sad, just like the ending of GT, which for all its faults had a pretty poetic yet sad conclusion. Movies. So there are a ton of Dragon Ball movies, some great, some okay, and some not so great. There are 4 OG Dragon Ball movies, 13 old school DBZ movies, and then the two Renaissance Dragon Ball Z films, those being Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, which are basically now Dragon Ball Super content but still labeled as Dragon Ball Z films, and then there are the two new DBS movies, Superhero and Broly. But there are also TV specials which are almost like movies, just usually a bit on the shorter side, and some of these are actually really good. Like like The History of Trunks and Bardock Father of Goku, but almost all of the movies are of pretty dubious canon status, except for Dragon Ball Super Broly and Superhero. But what even is canon, really? Like, there are at least two separate canons when it comes to Dragon Ball nowadays, the anime canon and the manga canon, at least in regards to Dragon Ball Super. And then with History of Trunks, like, is that canon because it adapts a special manga chapter, or is it not because it's different? I mean, Bardock Father of Goku was sadly retconned by the DBS version of Bardock, Bardock from Broly, and that other special chapter that Toriyama wrote, Dragon Ball Minus, not even so much a retcon, more like there was just no version of Bardock actually created specifically by Toriyama which would obviously make his version the more definitive one. Even Battle of Gods and Resurrection F have pretty much been overwritten by their show counterparts, which is a shame really, because I think without a doubt Battle of Gods is the best Dragon Ball movie hands down, but we're not here for a tier list so I guess we'll just move on. Budokai Series this game series is what actually got me into Dragon Ball in the first place. Playing Budokai 1 for the first time on the PS2 with my dad was my first exposure to Dragon Ball and actually one of the first video games I ever played. It's one thing experiencing the awesome and weird world of Dragon Ball Z without seeing Dragon Ball first, but it's another thing entirely, a new otherworldly experience to play it first as a video game. But because I did, I have a ton of nostalgia for these games. Not just Budokai 1 either, but 2 and 3 especially as well, which most fans of these games recognize as easily the best one, but also just one of the best Dragon Ball games ever made, but to break it down, they're basically pretty basic 2D fighting games made for the PS2, which were later remastered on the PS3 and Xbox 360. You can perform special moves, shoot key blasts, and power up as your favorite characters. What's not to love? You also got a story mode, world tournament, and who could forget the amazing OST, which is being used in this very video for how amazing it really is, despite some of the composers, um, uh, well, his track record when it comes to plagiarizing, but we'll get to that a bit later. Also, these games don't look too deep on paper, but especially with Budokai 3, when you get to the highest level, people can basically combo you to death using a series of insane button cancels and combos. Overall awesome games, and if you're a Dragon Ball fan who grew up in the early 2000s, you probably remember them quite fondly as well. Dokkan. Oh, Dokkan. How many days of my life have I wasted playing this glorified Dragon Ball Candy Crush game? Well, let's just say, a lot. I've been playing this game on and off since like 2017, I think. I'm about to reach my 2000th login day. But really, it's just a pretty basic gotcha game that's evolved a lot over the years, and it's still a great choice for when you're just bored on a car ride or just sitting around somewhere with your phone. But I guess if you go by pure playtime alone, this might actually be my most played Dragon Ball game, sadly. But yeah, this game is still going quite strong today, and has a huge dedicated player base and community on YouTube, with creators even just solely 
focusing on this one Dragon Ball game, Gine. Gine is the wife of Bardock and mother of Goku, and was introduced officially in Dragon Ball Minus, The Departure of the Fated Child, a special manga chapter created by Toriyama in 2014 as part of Jocko the Galactic Patrolman, who yes, had his own standalone manga. She was also introduced and featured more prominently in Dragon Ball Super Broly, which her and Bardock's story was essentially adapted from this Dragon Ball Minus manga, and I gotta say, not that big of a fan of it. Definitely preferred the old Bardock, but Gine herself is shown to resemble more so her elder son Raditz, which I guess makes sense, and she along with Bardock and the rest of the Saiyans on Planet Vegeta are all killed by Frieza before the main series even begins, although she and Bardock are also featured in the Granola Saga from the Dragon Ball Super manga. Goku Day some fans may be surprised to know that Goku Day isn't Goku's birthday or anything, or even the day the manga or anime first started, rather it's because of the Japanese numbers 5 and 9, Go and Ku, which combined equals Goku, simple as that. But the day itself is used to celebrate one of the greatest long-running anime series of all time, as well as of course the main man himself, Kamehameha in other languages. I guess I might as well just show you a few examples of this instead of just explaining, so here you go. Bruce Faulkner Tracks This refers to the American soundtrack that a lot of people grew up listening to in the Toonami airings of Dragon Ball Z, with the OST being created by the composer Bruce Faulkner. Now, I grew up on the DBZ DVDs, so I always watched it growing up with the Funimation dub but with the original Japanese music, but after watching it with the Faulkner score, I gotta say both of them are amazing in their own ways, and each have their own unique sound and iconic tracks. Like, come on, even growing up on the Kikuchi score, I have to give credit where it's due with Gohan's Anger probably the best Dragon Ball soundtrack of all time, and I don't say that lightly. You've also got classics like the SSJ3 Goku theme and even Perfect Cell's theme, so many good tracks. Even the overall vibe with his score is very different to the original Japanese composition. Still, I think I like both scores equally, but with certain tracks, there's definitely a key winner in my eyes. Raging Blast not a DBZ game I really grew up playing, but one that many did. It was released for the PS3 and Xbox 360 and is a 3D fighter, complete with a story mode and PvP and PvE modes, just like basically every other Dragon Ball game. Although this one received mixed reception due to the control scheme. However, there is a second Raging Blast title released in 2010, which is said to be a better game by most players. Hispanic Fanbase this refers to the fact that some of the biggest and most dedicated Dragon Ball fans are not even from Japan or the US, but rather are the Hispanic fans, because Dragon Ball is a huge deal in Mexico and other countries in Central and South America. Like remember those huge watch parties for the last few episodes of Dragon Ball Super? Well not only did that show just how many fans there really were, but also inspired the chanting soundtracks from Dragon Ball Super Broly, which definitely grew on me, and became some of my favorite recent tracks in the Dragon Ball Super OST. Saiyans named after vegetables. Classic Toriyama stuff right here. Having a quirky naming convention for groups of certain characters, and the most iconic of these has to be the Saiyan vegetable names, which honestly all sound really cool. At least the early ones do. In Dragon Ball Super we get Kale, Khalifa, and Kaba, but in DBZ we get Kakarot, Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, and of course Broly. All clear references to vegetables, but not just an outright vegetable name, you know what I mean? Like Kakarot is like carrot, right? Vegeta is just, well, a vegetable, Raditz is radish, Broly broccoli, you get the idea. They're supposed to be puns, and following this naming convention, made names that were vegetables still somehow sound badass, like Bardock, named after Burdock, or even Ginyu, which I know he's not a Saiyan, but his team follows a similar trend, but this time is named after dairy products, with his name being a pun on the Japanese word for milk. And of course, there's Frieza, the fridge or freezer, which is where the dairy products and vegetables are held, you could say. Yeah, when you say it like that, it kind of sounds dumb, but hey, it works. 
Ocean Dub The Ocean Group did some of the earliest known dubs of DBZ and Dragon Ball, and are what some fans grew up with. However, only the first 53 episodes of the show were aired in this format, as well as the third DBZ movie. It was also heavily edited and censored compared to later versions like the standard Funimation dub namely death scenes and any references to killing or dying. Instead, usually saying something like sending them to the next dimension, which is pretty hilarious. They also did return to later dub more episodes, starting at episode 108 instead of 54 for whatever reason. Xenoverse This is another well-known Dragon Ball game, which has a sequel as well made in 2016, which they're still milking content out of to this day. But these games allow you to create your very own Dragon Ball OC, and fight alongside Goku and the other Z fighters, and tackle the villains of Dragon Ball Z, GT, and even Super, following the stories through the use of time travel with Trunks, who is integral to the game's story and world. You can also do PvP as well, and customize your character's moves, transformations, and even their race when you create them. You can make a Saiyan, human, a Majin, and even a Namekian, which is pretty cool. Demon Realm The Demon Realm isn't well understood in the canon Dragon Ball story, and is merely mentioned a few times, notably with Tabura being the so-called Demon King. But the lore of it is expanded in Xenoverse and Dragon Ball Heroes. It is a plane of existence that is located outside of the physical realm as well as outside of the other world, and exists at the tip of the universe. In the original anime and manga, Bobbity teleports to Burra and Gohan to the Demon Realm to fight, where we get our only good canon look at it, but not much else is known about it, other than that it was created long ago by evil demon wizards like Mechi Kabura and Demigra, who originate from Xenoverse and Dragon Ball Online. What If Fights what if fights are just what they sound like? What if scenarios between different characters, sometimes from Dragon Ball and sometimes from other franchises, with people predicting using certain power scaling metrics who would win? I mean, there's entire YouTube channels dedicated to this kind of thing. Z slash GT slash Super. So this could just refer to each of these separate series, but also the timelines as they diverge after Z into non-canon territory with GT or the alternate canon route of Super, which people have a lot of strong opinions about. Some are staunch defenders of GT, while some completely hate its existence, and some feel the same way about Super, but for the most part, everyone loves Z, so we all at least have that in common. Yo, Son Goku and his friends return. Released in 2008, this is a 35-minute Dragon Ball short film made to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the first Dragon Ball film's release, The Path to Power. And honestly, this may be the real beginning of the Dragon Ball Renaissance era, as it seems the story concept written by Toriyama might have got him back invested in the franchise, as he would go on to create Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods, which would kick off this whole new era of Dragon Ball. So this special is definitely important, and honestly a pretty fun watch. We get to see the whole cast of main characters, along with some pretty good animation. Work. We also meet Vegeta's brother Tarbul, and we get these two guys fighting against Gotenks. It's a cool OVA, and I definitely recommend Dragon Ball fans to give it a watch if they've never seen it. The Big Getty Star Despite the return of Cooler not being the best Dragon Ball movie ever, the Big Getty Star is actually a really cool concept, and the idea of Metal Cooler is actually sick, and something that they should definitely bring into DBS. Basically, it's an artificial intelligence that controls a planet made of technology that can absorb machines and even regenerate itself infinitely, which is what happened with Metal Cooler. Eventually, Goku and Vegeta are able to overload the AI with power and destroy it, but still, it's a cool idea for a villain. Only 5 Minutes Here's a classic. This is an infamous line that Frieza said to Goku after starting the destruction of planet Namek, saying that they only had 5 minutes before the core would explode and completely destroy the planet, giving them a time limit to their final fight. Although as we know, this fight went on much longer than 5 minutes, it was more like 3 hours or something crazy like that, but the theory goes that they were just fighting so fast that it was really just 5 minutes slowed down. Which I mean, I can kinda get behind this theory. It's much more loose when it comes to pacing with a manga, so adapting this with all the material they had made it seem a lot longer. Not to mention how the anime loves to stretch out the manga's chapters as is, but yeah, it's become since kind of a meme in the community, and funnily enough, we kind of have a new version with Dragon Ball Super and the Tournament of Power, which was like 90 episodes even though the tournament itself only apparently lasted 48 minutes. Devilman. 
Also called Spike the Devil Man is a character featured in the original Dragon Ball anime and manga as one of Baba's fighters in the Baba Tournament Saga. He is defeated by Goku despite saying he previously won the World Tournament at least two times. He is later likely killed by Tambourine as well because of this, although he's also seen at the end of Dragon Ball Z giving energy to Goku's Super Spirit Bomb. The character is definitely a reference to the 1972 manga Devilman, which was later adapted into the anime Devilman Crybaby, which is on Netflix and a great watch if you haven't seen it yet. Chilled Chilled is an ancestor of Frieza featured in the episode of Bardock's special, where he is the main antagonist and fights Bardock, pushing him to become a Super Saiyan. He's basically Frieza, but he looks like a nerd. Fighters Probably my favorite Dragon Ball game of all time, and definitely my most played if you don't count Dokkan, but that doesn't really count, come on, it's a mobile game. No, this here is a real fighting game with a decent learning curve, but still fun to pick up and learn as a beginner. Even after playing this game for 5 years, I'm always learning new stuff. Still, the game isn't perfect. The online is, a uh, meh, but rollback netcode is coming. Allegedly, so hopefully that fixes that. But it's still fun to play against friends. However, the story mode is pretty bad, but come on, it's a fighting game, what do you expect? And the roster at launch was a little lacking, but since then they've added many iconic characters into the game and filled out the roster, which is nice given it's a 3v3 fighting game. Still, where's my boy Raddus? Come on, this is a meme at this point. Also, in case you've never played it or seen it before, this is the very gameplay you're watching right now, of me and my friend just sucking at the game. Definitely worth a try even if you're not into fighting games. Especially if you're a big Dragon Ball fan like myself. Super Saiyan Transformations Interesting that it's this far down, but we're still on the first tier if you can believe it. Anyway, these are the most iconic transformations of the series, exclusive of course to the Saiyan alien race. First off, you have the legendary Super Saiyan, no not the legendary Super Saiyan as in the Broly transformation, that's a whole different thing, which was not canon until DBS Broly, but you get the picture. The original Super Saiyan. Then you've got Super Saiyan 2, probably my favorite of all the Super Saiyan transformations, then SSJ3, which really just pushes it to the next level. Then of course there's Super Saiyan 4 Monkey Mode. Dragon Ball Super in the movies introduced us to the final Super Saiyan transformations for now, those being Super Saiyan God, Blue, and Evolution Blue, which is kind of in canon limbo, and Super Saiyan Rage Trunks, but I pretend that doesn't even exist. And then Beast Gohan now, if you consider that a Super Saiyan transformation. Not gonna get into the whole Super Saiyan Grey discussion yet, that's for a little later. The Hero Society This is some more Xenoverse lore for you, a group of 8 time patrollers that appear in the second game in Kanton City. They consist of Oba the male earthling, Biwasa the female Saiyan, Maraska the Namekian, Vuvuki of the Frieza clan, Sasana the female Majin, Hamburger, great name by the way, the male Saiyan, Gogo the male Majin, and then Nit the female earthling. Shaggy I love that Shaggy from Scooby-Doo appears on the first tier of a Dragon Ball Iceberg, but yeah, everyone knows Shaggy is the strongest character in the series, and the one who perfected Ultra Instinct. This became such a big meme that this is essentially canon in multiverses, which is just wild. Episode of Bardock I talked about this earlier with Chilled, but this is the special where Bardock finally becomes a Super Saiyan after somehow surviving the attack on Planet Vegeta and being sent back in time, and wakes up on a strange planet where he has to defend it from Chilled, Frieza's ancestor. Not a big fan of this special to be honest, but uh, some Bardock fans really like it so there you go. Filler Sagas Okay, so there are a ton of standalone filler episodes and even short sagas in Dragon Ball Z and even Super, which probably has the least amount of filler, but it still exists. So I'm just gonna name drop a few here. You've got the whole wedding thing in OG Dragon Ball, as well as some smaller filler episodes, and in DBZ you've got the classic driving episode, but that's just another standalone thing. But there are whole filler arcs, like Gohan surviving in the wilderness in the Saiyan Saga, as well as the Garlic Jr. and other World Tournament Sagas, which are entire filler arcs and honestly the other world tournament wasn't even that bad. Also there was a decent amount of filler with the Great Saiyan Saga, which was only a couple of chapters in the manga if I remember right. Super Saiyan 5 this is the fan transformation in the next in line after Super Saiyan 4, which typically in depictions we see of Goku or Tablos or whoever with the super long white hair and buffed up muscles, as well as a tail and even red skin and white fur. Yeah, it's a pretty wild and out there design I've gotta admit. And yeah, a lot of people thought this was actually supposed to be Goku, but this is apparently the author Tablos's OC. Uh, so yeah. A Bridge Series 
Funnily enough, a lot of people's first introduction to Dragon Ball wasn't through the official dub or even the original Japanese sub, but rather through Team 4 Stars Abridged YouTube series, which is a parody series posted to YouTube of Dragon Ball Z redubbed and edited in a comedic way, which also keeps most of the story beats intact, but makes fun of a lot of Dragon Ball's tropes, and also moves the story along a lot faster. It aired from 2008 to 2018 for 60 episodes before it was cancelled. Ultra Instinct the most well-known Dragon Ball transformation and moment in recent memory, becoming a worldwide phenomenon and meme essentially overnight after it was introduced in the Dragon Ball Super anime. It is now Goku's strongest transformation and technique, which allows him to fight without thinking directly, his body moving on its own, which is why it's also called the Mastery of Self Movement. And unlike a lot of other things in Dragon Ball Super, this was actually foreshadowed from the very beginning, as early as Battle of Gods and Resurrection F Sagas, with Whis basically directly referencing it in their training as their ultimate goal, which Goku first achieves as UI Sign, a slightly weaker version before mastering both offense and defense later on in the tournament with mastered UI. But from there it gets a little more complicated with the manga when you're talking about true Ultra Instinct, and then when Goku uses it as a technique with other transformations like Blue and God. But yeah, I'm sure everyone knows Ultra Instinct, so no need to talk about it for too long. Although last thing to say is that it might not be exclusive to Goku, as it is a technique of the gods that the Gods of Destruction themselves struggled to attain, including Beerus, but maybe we'll see a strong opponent use it against Goku and the others one day. I mean, Moro did technically kind of use it in the manga, but you know what I mean. Majin Race Creation not sure exactly what this is referring to, like, is this talking about creating a Majin character in Xenoverse, or is this literally referencing the creation of the Majin race in the canon? Either way, it seems there is no real Majin race canon-wise, at least when you're looking strictly at the manga and the original anime, because there's only really one Majin Buu, a creature that existed for millions of years since the beginning of time basically, who was controlled by Bibbidi and later Bobbidi. I always took it that Majin Buu was his full name, because in Japanese, Majin means demon demon basically, or something similar. And also, Boo lines up with the whole bibbidi bobbidi boo naming scheme. However, in the expanded lore such as with Xenoverse, there are actually Majin characters you can make, complete with their own unique fighting styles and designs. There's also another character named Majin Ozoto, or Ozato, a non-canon villain featured in Dragon Ball Z Virtual Reality Versus, a quite unique arcade fighting game from 1994, and he also appears in Dragon Ball Heroes because why not? Vegeta's Mustache Great way to end off this first tier, but basically just what it says. Vegeta did have a mustache in Dragon Ball GT early on, but eventually shaved it off, thank god. However, even though it's just kind of a random goofy addition to show how the characters have changed over the years, many have pointed out that it's a bit of a plot hole. Not like GT doesn't have enough of those already, but like Vegeta has never grown facial hair in all of DBZ, not even in the hyperbolic time chamber, and even stated that a Saiyan's hair never changes. Although that was later retconned in Dragon Ball Super Episode 32 where they reveal their beards after leaving the time chamber. Yes, it's more of a gag, but it definitely doesn't make sense, considering they've never grown facial hair during their previous time chamber trips, unless they just forgot the razor this time or something, I don't know. It's not to say Saiyans can't grow facial hair, because obviously Nappa did, and Vegeta's dad, King Vegeta, did have that goatee, so who knows? Probably not even Toriyama himself. Tier 2 Tori bot. The most powerful character in all of Dragon Ball. Not Zeno, not the Grand Priest, but him. That's because this is the persona of Toriyama himself, the all-powerful creator of everything, even Zeno. He has appeared in both Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball in the anime, and even in the manga and magazines as a comedic representation of the creator, sometimes leaving a direct message to the audience. Gohan Blanco. This is canon. No really, thanks to DBS Superhero. And no joke, the first thing I said when I saw Gohan Beast for the first time is Gohan Blanco, because that's what it is and you can't tell me otherwise. This all originated as a meme in the Spanish-speaking Dragon Ball community of a new Gohan form with white hair, hence the name Gohan Blanco, typically seen as an evolved form of Mystic or Ultimate Gohan, is usually also mentioned in conjunction with El Hermano, who's supposed to be like Jiren's brother or something, this guy as well, El Grande Padre, a aka the Grand Priest, who was at the center of DBS conspiracy theories way back when the T.O.P. was airing. DBS returns July 2019 
This hurts me to this day. Basically, this was a widespread rumor in the community following the end of the T.O.P. and Super as a whole, where it was allegedly leaked that the show would be returning in July of 2019, and after patiently waiting for a year, there was nothing. We had Broly early that year, but no new Super episodes, and then the rumor of the show coming back got pushed back more and more, until eventually we all just gave up hope on the show coming back anytime soon. But now there are new rumors of two Dragon Ball animes in production, including a web anime and possibly more super content, but I'm not gonna hold my breath until I see a trailer or something. Burst Limit Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit is another great Dragon Ball game I grew up with on the Xbox 360. A classic fighting style 2D game, very similar to the Budokai games, but with updated graphics and overall visuals. And all in all, it's just a really fun and nostalgic game with some really great OST. False Super Saiyan False Super Saiyan is a strange transformation featured in the DBZ movie Lord Slug, which Goku uses against the Namekian villain. And since this movie I believe takes place before the Frieza saga, but I'm not exactly sure because the whole timeline with the movies is confusing, but it seems like this was supposed to be an early glimpse of the Super Saiyan transformation with Goku raging out and getting the Super Saiyan spiky hair, although it's not actually blonde yet retaining a kind of brown tone. Its power is definitely less than that of a real Super Saiyan, which is typically regarded as a 50x multiplier, but was enough to easily dispatch Lord Slug, Yamoshi. Now, Yamoshi is a very interesting character in that he is never seen or officially mentioned in any source material directly, despite being a very important Saiyan and the first Super Saiyan God. This is because his name itself was only ever mentioned in interviews with Toriyama, although his backstory in becoming a Super Saiyan God is briefly talked about in Battle of Gods, as they used a similar ritual to get Goku the same power. He is also likely the legendary Super Saiyan referenced in the Namek Saga, who was born a thousand years ago, and remains a very interesting and mysterious figure, and as crazy as it sounds, many people, including myself, thought in this original Broly trailer that this was actually Yamoshi. In fact, not many people even thought that this was Broly. There was no hint of him being made canon into Dragon Ball Super, and it came as a shock that it was him for most of us. Meanwhile, the Yamoshi theory made a lot of sense, because it was around this time that Toriyama was dropping a bunch of lore in these interviews, including about the legendary Saiyan Yamoshi, but we still have yet to see him actually in the series. Besides Beerus's dream sequence of the Super Saiyan God, as well as him possibly speaking to Goku in the anime telling him not to give up, but I mean this is prime material for a movie villain right here, or some sort of new arc even. Hopefully Hopefully they don't just forget about this man. Harmony Gold The Harmony Gold dub is the first ever English dub of Dragon Ball made in the 1980s and is also called the Lost Dub due to only 5 episodes being available, as well as movies 1 and 3, which were heavily edited down. The dub was never released on home media, but was also less censored than the other versions. However, it's most notable for how the names were changed dramatically, such as Goku being called Zero, Bulma was called Lena, Yamcha Zidaki, Puar Squeaker, Oolong Mau Mau, you get the idea. 300 Stones so I believe this refers to a specific incident on the Japanese version of Dokkan Battle, where users received 300 Dragon Stones, which is a ton by the way, basically the gacha currency in the game used to summon characters. This led to a big controversy because this was a huge compensation, and they've never done anything like this before. They even gave players back their stones they spent on the current banner as well. So why, you might ask? Well, because of a visual bug they said, which is a bit suspicious. Likely the rates on the banner were actually messed up and rigged against players, which is why they felt compensation of this magnitude was needed. I'm not all that familiar with JP Dokkan history, but this was definitely a big event that even I remember from back in the day, up there with the airplane mode saga for sure. Toriyama's Forgetful Memory Everyone knows that Toriyama doesn't have the best memory when it comes to his own story. It's a bit of a meme, sure, but there's definitely some truth to it. One of the biggest examples being Launch, a character some fans might not even know or remember because she was a main character in OG Dragon Ball and then didn't really do anything in all of Z aside from some small filler scenes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think she was in Super. I can't even remember her being there at all. But don't even get me started on the inconsistency of hair colors, like Android 18 
but more importantly Trunks, which is such a rabbit hole in its own right. Like it's one of the most confusing things in Dragon Ball history. Like he had purple hair in the original anime, then Kid Trunks has purple hair in Super, but now Future Trunks has blue hair like Bulma, because that's how Toriyama drew it in the designs I think? What? And now in DBS Superhero, Kid Trunks now also has blue hair? I don't even know anymore. Neko Majin Z. Neko Majin Z is the name of a character in a one-shot manga called Neko Majin created by Akira Toriyama. He is basically a cat guy who studies under Goku and even flies on the Nimbus Cloud, and has his own transformation, the Super Neko Majin, basically his Super Saiyan. But this whole thing is just a self-parody done by Toriyama in good fun. Hit still in the Tournament of Power. Oh my god, the nostalgia. The memories all just came flooding in. This is a kind of uh, had to be there kind of situation, but watching the Tournament of Power as it was airing was such a fun and unique experience that I will never forget. The theories and insane fanfiction that people would come up with was endlessly hilarious and entertaining. One of the funniest theories was that Hit was not knocked out by Jiren and instead that was actually just one of his clones. Yes, the copium was real back then. I was never on this theory, but shout out to those Hit fans out there who thought their boy got bodied so hard that he still had to be in there. Chilling in like his time dimension or whatever. RIP. Zykor slash Zyko. Remember Dragon Ball AF? Well, this is one of the most well-known characters, Goku's other son, who was made by the West Supreme Kai using Goku's DNA, and is the main antagonist of Toy Bulls, aka Toyotaro's, version of Dragon Ball AF. His design is based on a Super Saiyan 9 fan transformation from the early 2000s according to Toyotaro, but to be honest, I don't know if it's just me, but his design reminds me of Dark Jack for some reason. Jocko Manga Everyone knows and maybe doesn't necessarily love Jocko, but he's a decently important character in the super manga. Not so much the anime, but fun fact, Toriyama actually wrote a 12 chapter manga following the Galactic Patrolman 10 years before the start of Dragon Ball, making it a prequel in a sense, and is actually where the Dragon Ball Minus stuff comes from as a bonus chapter of this story. We follow Jocko on his adventures, including him meeting Bulma as a 5 year old and her sister Tights. Future Jiren this is a Jiren counterpart from a future timeline seen in Xenoverse 2, however he is weaker than the OG Jiren from the present for some reason, and is also under the control of Dabura, who influenced him to work with Goku Black and Zamasu on the Zero Mortal plan. Which is just a wild fanfiction of writing, but that's Xenoverse in a nutshell, and it gives a reason to bring back and let you fight all these characters, so it's fine. Nobody watched Dragon Ball. A bit of a meme in the community, but kind of true for a lot of the people who just grew up with DBZ on Toonami. Some never even knew there was something before that, including myself for a while. As dumb as it sounds, not only did I not know OG Dragon Ball existed, but I also didn't even know what an anime was when I first watched the show. I thought it was just a weird, kind of edgy and cool American cartoon. Of course, as I got older I learned about OG Dragon Ball and gave it a watch, and it's amazing of course, everyone who's seen it knows it's great, different, more comedy focused than the action and drama of DBZ but an amazing anime in its own right. But Dragon Ball fans are also notorious for just getting things wrong. Like, don't mess with us Dragon Ball fans, we never watched the show. Krillin Owned Count one of the running gags in the Dragon Ball Z Abridged series is the Krillin owned count, poking fun at the amount of times Krillin has been killed, insulted, or just defeated in general. Oh god, don't even get us Dragon Ball fans started on the home media releases of this show. That's an entire can of worms with hours and hours of deep dives and discussions, just because of how terrible the releases of this show are, even compared to other anime from back in the day. I'm not gonna go through every home media release or else we'd be here all day, but basically the only good one are the Dragon Boxes, which are uncropped but also are DVDs and are very rare. The Blu-rays are cropped and the orange bricks are terrible but have a soft spot in my heart because that's what I grew up watching. They're bad, but at least they're cheap. The level sets are amazing actually, probably the best release, but sadly they only made two volumes before discontinuing it. Then there are the newer Blu-rays from the 30th anniversary and Steelbooks which are better, but not exactly what fans are looking for. Why can't we just get a clean, uncropped, minimal color grading release with film grain, colors, and everything intact? Is it so hard? Apparently so, which is weird because the Dragon Ball blue boxes look great to this day. The only release I need of that show, yet I'm sitting here with with so many different versions of Z. Blue Mr. Popo. 
Mr. Popo's design over the years has been criticized by some for being racially insensitive and even offensive, which has led to censoring of him, including downsizing his lips in Viz Media manga releases, and changing his skin tone from black to blue in some TV broadcasts of Dragon Ball Z Kai. Supreme Kai of Time also known as Kronoa, this is another major character featured in the Xenoverse games and is called the Lord of Time, and helps the player character and Trunks travel into the past to fight the villains of the Dragon Ball series, and she is also featured in Super Dragon Ball Heroes as well as Dragon Ball Online. Team 4 Star and Kai Dub this was a planned cameo appearance of the Team 4 Star cast in the official DBZ Kai dub, which was even teased before it was aired, but was removed due to Toei not being happy with the inclusion. At least that's what some people think, but the deleted scene was later found and it's great because they used the scene of the Cell vs Mr. Satan movie for all these jokes, which works pretty well. I'm honestly sad this didn't make it in officially, and I'm not even a big Dragon Ball abridged fan or anything. The Dai Zenshu these are Japanese guidebooks that were released after the manga and are usually used to help with power scaling, as they include references to power levels of certain characters which were previously unestablished. It also includes the names for attacks, complete timelines, character profiles, and interviews with Toriyama himself. There are seven of these encyclopedias released in Japan, as well as a few supplemental bonus volumes. There are also the Chosen Shu, which are basically four volumes of the condensed material of the original guidebooks, along with a bit of extra material. They really need to translate these and sell them over in the US, like, I'm begging you, take my money, please, I'm full consumer mode. But sadly, they only ever made the first volume back in 2008. Dragon Ball Multiverse so this could be referring to the concept of the multiverse introduced in Dragon Ball Super, but I think this is talking about the really big fan manga project of the same name, which has an entire dedicated team working behind it. I myself haven't read it, but this artwork looks pretty amazing for a fan manga, I gotta say. Zalama Another unseen character, and possibly the true strongest character in all of Dragon Ball, and I'm not memeing this time, he could actually be stronger than even Zeno. How, might you ask? Well, this is the creator of the Super Dragon Balls, the wish orbs used in the Tournament of Power which revived all of the universes, even when they were erased from existence by Zeno himself, suggesting possibly the balls have the power to override his own abilities, which might mean there are gods and beings even above Zeno, including Zalama, especially since apparently the Super Dragon Balls have no limitations on their wishes, suggesting their creator is an omnipotent being. Although maybe not, because you know there's that whole thing with the granola arc Dragon Balls being created by some random old Namekian guy named Jeff or whatever that allowed granola and gas to wish to be the strongest in the universe somehow, so maybe that all got thrown out the window. Either way, I hope Zalama eventually makes an appearance in the anime or the manga. Shall it? Shallot is the main character and a Saiyan from Planet Sadala in Dragon Ball Legends, who eventually is able to become a Super Saiyan God, and also has a twin brother named Giblet, which is probably the dumbest name I've ever heard. Actually, what am I talking about? That goes to this guy. Legacy of Goku this refers to a trilogy of Game Boy Advance Dragon Ball Z RPG games, those being Legacy of Goku, Legacy of Goku 2, and Boo's Fury. The first one covers the events through the end of the Frieza Saga, the second one covers the entire Cell Saga, and Boo's Fury covers the Boo Saga and the ending of DBZ. The games are pretty fondly remembered by fans, mostly though the second game. Reincarnated as Yamcha so, I guess due to the whole Isekai anime craze around 2016, we got an Isekai where some dude is reincarnated as Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z, and a spin-off manga released officially by Shonen Jump, created by Dragon Gero Lee. And basically the story here is some guy dies falling down the stairs and wakes up as Yamcha and gets to live out his fantasies as Dragon Ball's greatest punching bag, and it goes through the regular story beats of DBZ but with this added twist, even defeating the Cybermen and not suffering his most iconic death. Android 16 is Dr. Jiro's son. This is actually one of my favorite Dragon Ball theories, and actually now because of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, it's actually proven as canon. Now, he's not actually his son, but rather he's a completely synthetic android that was actually modeled after Dr. Jiro's late son who died serving in the Red Ribbon Army, and we even get to see his name was Givo in Superhero, and then his mom was Android 21, a reference to fighters. She's not actually an android, but you get the idea. But back to 16, because Jiro loved his son, it appears he made the android too gentle and 
him, therefore he could not fight for him the way he wanted him to. And not wanting the android to be destroyed, likely never intended to actually utilize him, instead later creating android 17, 18, 19, turning himself into an android, and of course making his greatest creation yet, Cell. Dr. Slump. This was the series that popularized Toriyama's work in Japan before Dragon Ball. Running from 1980 to 1984, this was a comedy manga series about a robot girl named Arale Norimaki who lived in Penguin Village with her inventor Senbei Norimaki as well as other characters. The manga was also adapted by Toei Animation into a long-running anime series from 1981 to 1986 for over 200 episodes. Arale herself has since made many cameo appearances in Dragon Ball, including an entire filler episode dedicated to her in Dragon Ball Super. 28 Planets with Life This refers to something Shin, the Supreme Kai, says in Dragon Ball Super, which proved this man is the most incompetent Supreme Kai out there. Like, this man does not do his job, and he has to be capping with this one. Claiming that their universe, Universe 7, only has 28 planets with life? Bruh. Like, think of all the different alien species we've encountered in the series. From the Saiyans, to the different kinds of aliens in Frieza's army, Frieza himself, Yakon, Pui Pui, like, the list goes on. This is why Universe 7 ended up ranking second to last in the Zeno exhibition. S-Cells this is another piece of lore that was dropped by Toriyama in an interview. It's kind of a weird retroactive explanation of Super Saiyans and why each of the characters achieved it in different ways. Like he said that Goku had more S cells because he was less violent than the typical Saiyan, which is also why the Universe 6 Saiyans were able to also be able to transform into Super Saiyans so easily, but I'm not a very big fan of this explanation. Like doesn't it invalidate the whole rage part of Super Saiyan with Goku finally losing it against Frieza? This also explains though why it was so hard for Vegeta to achieve Super Saiyan and had to go about it very differently. Also, Goten and Trunks got it so easily because they are also good natured and they're half Saiyan hybrids, of course, which also increases their potential. Same story with Gohan. Beerus killed Saiyans. This is a pretty huge detail that is referenced in both the Battle of Gods film as well as in the anime counterpart, where it is said that Beerus gave Frieza permission to destroy planet Vegeta, and I don't really like this retcon all that much, and some say it's not even canon, but either way it really takes away from the whole Frieza Saiyan rivalry as well as the Super Saiyan legacy, and Vegeta or Goku never even mention it, like they don't even care, like isn't it just a little bit awkward that one of your friends ended up blowing up your home planet, almost made your race extinct, and even killed both your dads? Uh, I guess not, because he didn't actually do it, he just told the other guy he could do it. And this is fuel for some good drama, like a rematch between Beerus and Vegeta, kinda like they did in the manga, but with more drama and more stakes. Now that would be sick. Fusions Fusion is one of Dragon Ball's most unique and awesome techniques first introduced in the Buu Saga. I mean, there was a fusion before that technically, with Piccolo, Kami, and Nail, but the first true fusion was the introduction of the Metamoran Dance, which Goku teaches to Goten and Trunks to create Gotenks, which is incredibly epic. Later used in DBS Broly with Goku and Vegeta to officially create the canon Gogeta. And then of course, who could forget the Patara Earring fusion of Vegito, who in the DBZ days was the strongest character in the history of Dragon Ball with no one, not even Buhan, coming close to their power. But don't even get me started on the whole non-canon fusions from like the games and Dragon Ball Heroes. There's some wild abominations out there. There's even a whole game basically dedicated to this called Dragon Ball Fusions. Vic Mignogna Scandal this is overall a very sad situation, where the voice actor of Broly in Dragon Ball Z was accused of sexual harassment and misconduct by fans and other voice actors, leading him to be cut from all future Funimation projects. And I definitely don't know enough about this to personally comment on the situation, but all around it's just a sad thing to see. Perfected Blue Perfected Super Saiyan Blue is a manga-only transformation that is used by both Goku and Vegeta starting in the Goku Black arc, with the only visual difference being that it contains their blue auras, seemingly concentrating the power of blue and not letting the key leave their bodies, and allows them to utilize the blue state at full power throughout the duration of a fight and is very similar to the Super Saiyan full power technique, as it is the mastered state of blue, although it is yet to make an appearance in the anime or movies. Big Green Dub. 
also known as the AV Group dub or the Toonami UK dub, which covered the Dragon Ball specials and movies except for the Path to Power, as well as the last four DBZ films of the 90s. It's called the Big Green dub because that's Piccolo's nickname for some reason. Possibly because the script was adapted from a French translation of Dragon Ball for some reason as well, which led to other weird names like Saiyans being called Space Warriors, Krillin being called Clearin, and my personal favorite, Chaos instead of Chaozu. Really embodies the little guy's character, doesn't it? Lapis and Lazuli. These are the real names of the human twins who were used to create Android 17 and 18 after being captured by Dr. Jiro. Interestingly though, Shenron is enabled to fully turn them back into humans, so even after starting families and getting on with their somewhat regular lives, they still refer to each other as 17 and 18. Guess it's just become a part of them at this point. I mean, they still have infinite energy and all the perks of being androids, so might as well embrace it. Suno. This is a very random one. I thought initially this was talking about Zuno, that omniscient fortune teller guy from DBS, but no, this is a girl that Goku met while looking for the Dragon Balls after the 21st World Tournament, back when he was still a kid. She also later has a cameo appearance as an adult in the Buu Saga and in GT. Goku Drip Definitely surprised this isn't on the first tier. This was one of the biggest memes to ever come out of modern Dragon Ball. Starting in late 2020, these were everywhere. The classic bait and switch with this dripped out hype beast Goku. Then the meme just really took off from here, branching off into different properties entirely, such as with Among Us Drip. Frost Demons. This is a non-canon name I believe given to the alien species that Frieza and King Cold belong to. Their lineage is further expanded in game material and other non-canon stuff like movies with Cooler, Chilled, and even other fan mangas with Dragon Ball Multiverse. This name comes from the fact that their naming scheme is all related to cold things like a freezer and a cooler. Make Cooler canon by the way, next movie villain please, and thank you. Ultra Ego this is Vegeta's latest transformation featured in the Granola arc, which is his counterpart to Ultra Instinct. Instead of following the Angel's way of power, instead it follows the Gods of Destruction, giving him purple hair and no eyebrows, and honestly it looks sick on paper. God of Destruction Vegeta, awesome, right? Well in practice, he kinda got clowned on by Granola when he used it, yet yeah, not really a good look. And I'm not sure how to feel about the name, like, yeah, it definitely fits Vegeta's personality, but really ego, that's that's what gives you all this power? Something like Ultra Destruction or something related to the actual Gods of Destruction probably would have made more sense lore-wise, but I guess it's not a big deal. Honestly, I just want to see this in action when he's not getting one-shotted by Black Frieza or being memed on by Granola. HFIL this is the infamous censored name of Hell used in the Saban dub of DBZ, which is now an acronym that stands for Home for Infinite Losers. They really had to go through thousands of frames just to change this one small detail, so shout out to them I guess. Bola slash Bra Name most Dragon Ball fans know that most characters follow some sort of unique naming scheme related to puns, with Bulma's family being underwear, which is why her daughter is named Bra or Bulla, which is the version they now use in both the Japanese and English versions. Jiren Transcends Time This is another hit fan cope. Just kidding, but this is actually confirmed because despite using all his time bending techniques, Hit was still unable to beat Jiren, even using his time cage ability, which we should have expected honestly if Blue Kaioken Goku was able to beat Hit's time skip. Although he did increase the duration since then, but still, Jiren is just that guy. El Hermano. Speaking of Jiren, this is his evil older brother who was said to have killed their parents and Jiren's master. He's got that like Itachi light backstory going and is somehow even more powerful than the gods of destruction and even the angels and the grand priest, but apparently was overpowered by Gohan Blanco and Shaggy, the ultimate duo. He was no match for UI Shaggy. RIP. To be released. Oh no, the flashbacks, they're hitting again. This is another infamous Dokkan controversy, this time with the release of categories on Global and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Omega Shenron, which infamously said to be released with their leader skills because categories had not yet been implemented into the game, and I cannot for the life of me understand what they were thinking with this decision. Like either drop the categories or just make Global wait longer or something because this was not it. Still a meme in the community to this day. Dr. W. 
Also known as Dr. Wheelow, he is the villain of the DBZ movie The World's Strongest and uses a mechanical robot to fight, and he even later appears years later in Dragon Ball Heroes, showing his human form because in the movie he's just a brain inside of the robot body. Black's original English voice. Before the English dub of Dragon Ball Super came out, Sean Schemmel, the voice actor of Goku, played around with the idea of a British accent, as can be heard in the first dubbed voice lines of the character in the Dragon Ball games, notably in Dragon Ball Fighters and Xenoverse 2. It gives off those snobbish royal vibes of Goku Black, but I think it was a bit much. Still, I can't help but laugh at some of these fighters' lines, they're just gold. Don't laugh too soon. Useless! Behold the power of a god! It would be Rosé. Not getting away! Kamehame! This is the technique of a god! Be gone! Punishment of the gods! Taste my blade! Taste divine fury! Sunda! Tier 3 Bibbidi Clone Bibbidi's clone is actually just Bobbidi himself as far as I know, although he has a very different design in the anime version because he is not seen in the manga, kind of implying they would just kind of look the same. But maybe they're supposed to be slightly different, like with King Piccolo and Piccolo Jr., maybe a similar kind of situation. Toriko Crossover Toriko is another shonen manga from the 2010s which was adapted into an anime series by Toei Animation, and along with a few One Piece collabs, there was a three-way crossover between Toriko, One Piece, and Dragon Ball in a one-hour special released in April of 2013, with the main characters interacting and even fighting one another. Masked Saiyan Man, who could this be? I wonder. Could it be... no, it can't be. Yajirobe, is that... is that really you? Just kidding, obviously this is the worst disguise in fiction history, and this is obviously Bardock. He's featured in Dragon Ball Heroes as well as Xenoverse as a central villain being controlled by Mira and Toa. Cut Faulkner score. So I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to, maybe there are some lost or cut soundtracks from DBZ or something, but I couldn't really find anything notable on this. Or this could just be talking about the fact that the Falconer score was replaced in some DVD and Blu-ray releases by the original Japanese OST, and in Kai they also used a completely different composer, making such an iconic soundtrack only available from certain US releases and broadcasts of Dragon Ball Z. Super villain Yamcha. So either this is talking about some edgy creepypasta where Yamcha kills everyone, which I actually do remember being a thing back in the day, or this is simply just referring to the supervillain counterpart featured in Xenoverse yet again, who is being controlled by Toa. However, it is kind of interesting because usually the mind-controlled characters are all villains, while well, Yamcha clearly isn't. Kuriza. The son of Frieza featured in the Neko Majin manga, who appears as a main antagonist, and resembles his father quite a bit, although he is significantly smaller and has a horn on his head, although he is also probably the least evil of all the Frieza clan members. Toriyama's cat inspired Beerus. This is just wholesome greatness on Toriyama's part, and what gave us one of modern Dragon Ball's best additions, probably the best to be honest, everyone's favorite lazy cat and god of destruction at Scooby-Doo. I mean Bills. I mean Lord Beerus. His design is not only inspired by ancient Egyptian gods Anubis and Sekhmet, but also Toriyama's house cat named Debo. And yeah, I can definitely see the resemblance there, so shout out to the strongest cat in the universe. Summer Vacation Special this is a rare and lesser known TV special from Dragon Ball Z, which aired in Japan in 1992, which has never had a home media release and hasn't been dubbed either. It's a bit of a strange one, as Goku and Gohan can be seen wearing tuxedos in West City and start talking about the events of the various DBZ and OG Dragon Ball movies, giving a brief recap of their events before Goku powers up out of his tuxedo into his martial arts gi, and Gohan tells the camera to go watch the new film at the time, Super Android 13, which was playing in theaters. Bang Zoom Dub So I didn't even know this existed, but this is another English dub for Dragon Ball Super, which is exclusive to Southeast Asia and India, and aired in January of 2017. While the Funimation dub obviously aired in the US, but also in Canada and the United Kingdom, making this other dub way less known about in the West. A few actors from the Harmony Gold dub even joined the cast of voice actors, however the dub was eventually cancelled after only 27 episodes were produced. Pan lacks Saiyan blood to go Super Saiyan. 
This I guess stems from the fact that Pan never uses Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball GT, which some attribute to her not having enough Saiyan blood, which I guess makes sense, because remember, Pan is the daughter of a human and a half Saiyan, making her actually only a quarter Saiyan, yet we see at the end of Dragon Ball Z and even in Super Hero that she is remarkably strong for her age, which is likely due to her Saiyan blood. But maybe she will go Super Saiyan if we ever get past the end of Z era in Super. Also I just realized Goku Jr. who was born 100 years later and is barely a Saiyan at this point, unless there's some other Saiyans out there making these kids, goes Super Saiyan in a hero's legacy. So uh, rip that whole theory, I guess. But there's also the fact that Toriyama even stated that he didn't know how to draw a female Super Saiyan, so there's that, I guess, too. The Dictator. Oh boy, so uh, yeah, one of the villains resurrected during Fusion Reborn was this guy. They didn't actually call him by his name, but it's pretty obvious what this caricature represents. Due to this, in a lot of countries and certain dubs and edits, he was cut entirely from the film, along with his brief fight and exchange with Gotenks, who defeats him and his army using the Super Ghost Kamikaze attack. Tiensha. Yes, the glorious fusion of Tien and Yamcha, seen in Budokai 2 and later on in other games. Let's make this canon in the next movie, Toei. Traffic Safety Airing in Japan in 1988, we have Goku's Traffic Safety, a PSA that aired on TV and was shown at schools. In the special, it is Bulma's birthday, and her friends try to get to her party on time, including Goku, Roshi, and Krillin. Kind of randomly, a boy is almost hit by a speeding car, and a traffic lady scolds the driver and the boy, while Goku is also scolded after trying to cross the freeway, as the traffic lady again appears and warns of the dangers of running across the road. This also happens again after the party when everyone chases Goku out of Capsule Corp, with the traffic lady warning for the final time about the dangers of running in the street. This short was also produced alongside another public safety PSA, which appears in the next tier. Android 21 is a minor. Yeah, so Android 21 is the new character introduced in Dragon Ball Fighters that has had some, uh, had some simps over the years, okay? Which I'm not exactly shocked by, however in the game she reveals that she isn't even 10 years old, despite looking like an adult woman. Whoops. And we later actually find out that in DBS Superhero, she was modeled after Jiro's late wife, Vomi. Angels are evil. Probably the biggest theory during the Tournament of Power, and one of the funnest ones, honestly. Kind of wish this was actually a thing, even if it's basically fanfiction come to life, but isn't that what Dragon Ball Super already is at this point? Most of this speculation stemmed from the fact that most of the angels remained indifferent to the fact that their universes were being erased during the T.O.P., couple that with the fact that they were exempt from erasure, and the creepy looks that the Grand Priest gave when they were all eliminated, and many thought they might be planning an uprising or something against Grand Zeno, with El Grande Padre as the mastermind, which could potentially lead us into a new arc following the T.O.P. Mortals vs. Gods. Sounds like a cool idea, right? Many even speculated that the Grand Priest may have been the one who killed Jiren's master in his backstory, the so-called evildoer that is mentioned. But I guess we'll never know unless they plan on expanding on the Grand Priest in the future. Missing Scenes in DBS Special I believe this is talking about the hour-long DBS special of episodes 109 and 110, which side note was an insanely hype event, the reveal of Ultra Instinct, which was crashing the streaming servers back in the day. Good times. But apparently there were some missing and deleted scenes, and this is very interesting because I don't think I had ever seen these two missing scenes before, and maybe you haven't either, so here you go. Yeah, so we have some more reaction shots to Goku's spear bomb against Jiren, but most notably a shot of the Grand Priest using a bubble to protect the Zenos. Hmm, very interesting that they would cut this out, right? Almost like they were worried this scene would imply the Zenos are actually much weaker than we thought. Or maybe we're just overthinking this and he was doing it so they wouldn't get annoyed. Regardless, it's still very interesting, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this scene as well. SoFi Dub SoFi is the studio responsible for a lot of the early attempts at Dragon Ball Z dubbing in France. They are notorious for having produced dubs with quite a few changes, in terms of questionable translations, as well as some seemingly random name differences and censorship. 
Dragon Boy Dragon Boy is the precursor to Dragon Ball, written as a two-chapter one-off manga by Akira Toriyama in 1983. It's similarly based on Journey to the West and follows early prototypes of Goku and Bulma on a similar adventure, but this time they're called Teng Tong and the Princess of the Flower Country. There's even a Master Roshi type mentor character, a transforming demon similar to Oolong or Puwar, and balls that summon a dragon, although they do not actually grant any wishes. Goku Black is Goten. Another hilarious but kind of understandable theory from back during the Zamasu arc, everyone wanted to know who Goku Black really was, because the idea that it was our Goku was absurd, right? It can't just be an evil Goku, that's too easy. Well, it wasn't just an evil Goku. It turned out to be a Supreme Kai who body swapped with Goku, which no one would have predicted before Zamasu was introduced into the story. But right after getting a good look at this guy, yeah, it's almost immediately obvious he's Goku Black. But before all that, there were plenty of intriguing theories. One of the biggest ones being that Goku's son, who looks the most like him, Goten, was the main culprit. Although there are some pretty obvious flaws with this theory in hindsight. The biggest being that Goten looks nothing like Goku when he grows up, evidenced by his appearance at the end of Z. But also it's hard to see how and why Goten would turn so evil. Maybe similar to a baby situation was predicted, which did turn out to be the case, just with Goku and not Goten. But the biggest issue of all is that Goten doesn't even exist in future Trunks' timeline, because Goku died from the heart virus. The only thing that really supported this besides his design would be the fact that he's Trunks' best friend, and it would have made for a pretty sick rivalry between the two. But make no mistake, this isn't even close to the worst Goku Black theory. That comes later. Dragon Ball Z Sagas is it bad that I have some nostalgia for this game? Probably. It's notorious for being one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever made. Released on the Xbox, GameCube, and PS2, it's a 3D adventure beat-em-up title that takes you through the various sagas of Dragon Ball Z, which you can even play co-op with a friend. I remember playing it with my brother, so it has a soft spot in my heart, even though it's completely terrible. In fact, I don't even think we got past the Raditz boss at the very beginning of the game, before we just went back to playing Budokai 3 or something. Goku is the villain in the Tournament of Power. Now, this is something I'm actually a big fan of, and it's not even really a theory, this is straight up how it's portrayed in the beginning stages of the tournament, especially in the God Prelude event. They kind of dropped this in the later stages of the arc, but this was absolutely a part of the story originally, and definitely a cool concept. Because Goku causes the Tournament of Power and indirectly the deaths of uncountable innocents from the 11 other universes. This man killed more people than Thanos, let that sink in. And everyone recognizes this as well, at least in the beginning. They target Goku due to him suggesting this tournament in the first place, and they even delved into this with the first time Goku and Jiren fought, as not only did the Spirit Bomb not work on Jiren, but it did work on Goku. Now I'm not saying that directly suggests that Goku was the villain and Jiren is the hero, but it was at least a cool thing they toyed around with for a bit, before they eventually just forgot about it completely, and in fact made Jiren a villain completely out of nowhere, shooting a random key blast at Goku's friends for absolutely no reason. Like, Jiren is supposed to be like Superman or something in this universe, right? Like an actual superhero, and Goku just forgives him for this, like literally minutes later in real time. So I try to pretend that this just never happened. Partial Manifestation this refers to a pseudo-Super Saiyan transformation-like state that utilizes some of the power of a Super Saiyan while not completing the full transformation, which usually is shown with the spiked up Super Saiyan hair but without the blonde, retaining its natural black color, which has been seen a few times throughout the franchise. One of the most notable recent examples was Goku and Frieza vs Jiren in the T.O.P, where Goku is fading in and out of Super Saiyan due to his drained energy. It also appeared in the manga during the father-son Kamehameha. Yeah, yeah, surprisingly Goku doesn't actually go full on blonde Super Saiyan in the color manga version. He also used this in the filler episode 195 from Dragon Ball Z titled Warriors of the Dead against the deceased members of the Ginyu Force during the Otherworld Saga. Toy Bowl. Toybull is the artist name of Toyotaro, the manga artist now responsible for the official Dragon Ball Super manga, who previously under the pen name of Toybull made his very own Dragon Ball AF fan manga, which led to him being hired to work on the real thing. Strongest Human is Krillin 
No, but for real, put some respect on Krillin's name. Even if it means we low-key kinda gotta disrespect my boy Tien, who's always out here getting shafted, and honestly probably deserves to be the strongest human given how hard he trains, but come on. It's the main character's best friend we're talking about. But they're both OGs, so I could live with it being either of them, but honestly I'm just waiting for Yamcha to surpass both of them. That's what the next movie should be about. You're welcome for the idea, Toriyama. No, but actually, since we got a Piccolo and Gohan movie, all I really want to see now is a Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien movie. Toei would never do it, but that would just be so awesome. Mark. Are you guys ready for something cursed? What is Mr. Satan's real name? Hercule? Wrong. Apparently his real name is Mark, which is just the most hilariously plain name in the history of Dragon Ball. Nothing against the name, but I gotta admit, Hercule is a much more unique name. Even just Mr. Satan as well. But it seems these are simply stage monikers, and Mark still does fit with Toriyama's devil slash demon naming scheme, as it is a rearrangement of the romanization of the word Akuma, Japanese for devil, which becomes Maku or Mark. The more you know, I guess. Plan to eradicate the Saiyans. This was an OVA or original video animation created and released on cassettes in Japan in 1993 as part of a tie-in with a RPG game of the same name for the Famicom. The OVA was also later completely remade and released alongside another Dragon Ball game in Raging Blast 2 in 2010, now called Dragon Ball Plan to Eradicate the Super Saiyans, which featured the new villain Hachiak, as well as many other returning movie villains like Cooler, Turles, and Lord Slug. Blue Water Dub Yet another English dub. Get used to it, there's quite a few more to come. This was a dub by the AB group for original Dragon Ball and GT, which were shown in the UK, Canada, the Netherlands, and Ireland. Kaioken Chi Chi here we have a bit of a joke clip in Dragon Ball Z, where Chi Chi was so mad at Krillin's girlfriend Marin in this filler episode that she gave off a menacing red aura, basically looking like she was using the Kaioken technique. His power is maximum. This is a very early Dragon Ball meme that was even featured in that Team 4 Star Kai cameo, although its origins go back even before then, and possibly started because of this image in a newspaper of kids' drawings, which included one of Broly, with the phrase, his power is maximum. Zero. This could be referring to a few things, but it's probably Toyotaro's fan manga called Dragon Ball Zero, which focused on a young Raditz as the main character, along with his Saiyan friends, including Turles, which all took place before the destruction of Planet Vegeta. Goten is Yamcha's son. Another hilarious fringe theory, but one with a little more substance than you might think. I mean, look at their hairstyles, don't they look pretty similar? And what do you think was going on with Yamcha and Chi Chi? I mean, he was over at their house when Goku had the heart virus, right? Maybe he, you know. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, Goten can turn into a Super Saiyan, so there goes that theory, and even had Goku's iconic hair when he was young. So unless Yamcha's secretly a Saiyan as well, Yamcha's still the old bandit of the desert, if you know what I mean. Dry as a m Katas. Katas is the father of the nameless Namekian, the one who originally came to Earth and split into King Piccolo and Kami, and is described as a kind soul and a genius by Elder Guru on Namek, and was also a part of the Dragon Clan, the members of the race responsible for creating the Dragon Balls and utilizing the Namekian's more mystical abilities. However, Katas, along with all the other Namekians besides Guru, were killed after a climate shifting event in 261, although he was able to save his son and send him to to Earth, very similar to Goku's backstory. With Guru being the only one left, he ended up restoring the population of the planet himself. Which, before you ask, yes, Namekians can and do reproduce by themselves. Scout Scopes First introduced in Dragon Ball Super Broly, these are the precursors to the scouters we all know and love from Dragon Ball Z, a more primitive version in the form of a scope used by the Saiyans before Frieza arrives as the universe's new emperor and gifts them the new model of scouter. Pretty small, yet a really cool world building moment, always a fan of those. Namek Seijin Densetsu this is another Dragon Ball fan manga, and as the title of it suggests, it focuses on planet Namek as well as two Namekian brothers. Shin Budokai 
Shin Budokai is another fighting game in the Budokai series, released in 2006 for the PSP as a sequel to Shin Budokai Another Road, which is weird. The game with the subtitle is actually the first one, apparently. But anyway, yeah, it's a standard Budokai fighting title, although it did also have a network multiplayer mode, which is kind of a cool idea, I guess. Turles is Goku's cousin. This idea stems from the fact that this is evil Goku number, what, three at this point? Although he did come before Goku Black. The original, if you will, besides Ginyu, of course. But anyway, yeah, he has a similar hairstyle to Goku, so are they related? Well, no, I don't actually think so. First of all, it'd be kind of dumb if anyone related to you had the exact same hairstyle. Like, imagine your cousin looked exactly like you. I mean, Raditz looks nothing like Goku, and that's his brother. But also, Turles himself gives an explanation in the movie, which isn't exactly real given what we know of the Saiyans and DBS Broly and from other canon material, but it's still the explanation that he gives, which is that all low-class Saiyans just look similar for some reason. This dude's capping, though. Also, if you look closely in the original design, it is a bit different. Different. Like his hair is a little bit wavier, a little bigger too, but they kind of did away with that later on. Tien is an alien. This is something I'm sure a lot of people would assume upon first glance. I mean, he's a man with three eyes, and he can grow multiple arms out of his body. Is that normal human behavior? Well, I guess so. I mean, think about it. Even before Tien, there were anthropomorphic animals walking around. I mean, you've got people like Oolong, Puar, Chaozu. People are just weird in this universe, in a good way. So what does that make Tien? Honestly, he's more normal than a lot of the people Goku encounters in Dragon Ball. Plus, how could I forget to mention that Krillin doesn't even have a nose? But in the Daizenshu, Tien is classified officially as an Earthling, although he descended from a tribe of three-eyed people who were likely descended from aliens. Prince Vegeta YouTube Prince Vegeta is a YouTube channel run by a guy that does some pretty good impressions of Vegeta, making DBZ parodies and Vegeta reactions and even Let's Plays. El Grande Padre, aka the Grand Priest and the true father of Gohan Blanco, apparently. And the true villain who plans to kill Zeno and overthrow the multiverse, becoming the sole ruler. And apparently he himself has a father, El Grande Abuelo, the first Saiyan, quote unquote. Yeah, this lore goes way too deep. Beerus Sealed Elder Kai. This is a pretty cool fact, and an example of fun retroactive world building that enhances the universe in my eyes, and definitely is something Beerus would do. Because as we know, Elder Kai in Dragon Ball Z is released from his captivity inside the Z-Sword when Gohan and Goku break it, with him revealing he was trapped inside of it by a powerful evil force, though not as evil as Majin Buu for millions of years. He never explicitly stated who, but I do love that it ended up being Beerus. This is a cool piece of world building done right, unlike shoehorning him into the conflict between Frieza and the Saiyans, which kind of muddles that whole emotional journey and storyline. Cooler slash Kura name. Pretty simple one here, but the Japanese name for Cooler is actually Kula or Kura, which to be honest sounds pretty weird but makes more sense, as it follows the same trend as Frieza's name, but Cooler just sounds, well, cooler, so there you go. Cell is a cicada. So Cell's design went through a lot of changes, not just in the initial concept, but also in the manga itself, having three different distinct forms, which are all awesome in their own ways. Like, I gotta just say this right now, Toriyama is the king of villain designs. Like, some of these characters are just so unique and just sick. But back to the entry. When Cell first hatches, he comes out of this cicada-like shell, starting as a larva and becoming imperfect Cell. Definitely an interesting and cool design choice that fits with this first form of the android. The insect slash bug vibes were really strong on this one. LR Kid Boo. Quite the meme in the Dokkan community because even after all these years, like what aren't we on the 8th anniversary now, almost 9th, there's still no LR Kid Boo, the final boss of DBZ, and no LR. Like, they have to know it's a meme at this point, they're they're actually trolling. Like, there's three, count them, three LR Bobbities, and like a million Super Saiyan 4 Goku LRs, yet no Kid Buu. When he drops, he better be the most broken card in the game, that's all I can say. Tier 4 Original Italian Dub 
This dub was aired for the first time in Italy in 1989, and was only shown up to the 54th episode, but was otherwise said to be a fairly faithful adaptation of the source material, leaving many of the Japanese names unchanged, despite the studio having a pretty low budget when producing this version. Ambassador Goku of 2020 Olympics Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the 2020 Tokyo Olympics ended up being delayed until 2021. However, it was originally planned for Goku to actually make an appearance as an official ambassador for the games, which would have been awesome, but as far as I'm aware, that never happened, sadly. Buchigiri Match Here's a piece of Dragon Ball Lost Media, a mobile card game released in Japan in 2018 that was shut down in March of 2020, making it now Lost, despite there being quite a bit of gameplay online. It's a standard mobile gacha game that never really took off, and was shut down as both Dragon Ball Legends and Dokkan Battle are already very profitable successes in both Japan and the rest of the world. Fire Safety PSA this is the other public safety video created for Dragon Ball in 1988, promoting fire safety. In it, Goku saves some kids from a fire they started by accidentally throwing firecrackers into a trash can and warns of the dangers of playing with fire. Goku, Yamcha, Roshi, and Krillin all volunteer as firefighters and also help out to put out a house fire, while Roshi explains how fires can start and gives advice on how to stay safe. Dragon Ball GT Final Bout this is a very notorious Dragon Ball game, known as one of the worst the franchise has to offer, and possibly the worst 2D fighter it has ever seen. It was first released in 1997, and is notable for being a GT-themed game, as the show was still fairly fresh at the time. It's also the first 3D rendered Dragon Ball fighting game, and the first ever Dragon Ball game to officially be licensed and released in North America. However, the game is infamous for having terrible controls. But it does have some interesting voice cast choices for the English dub. You look strong. This should be a good fight. So, let's see how strong you are. You're not as strong as you said. So, just as I've thought, you're great. Phew, that was a bit too close. Piccolo and King Piccolo Fusion. This is an evil boo, good boo situation. Like, they're kind of the same guy, even though sometimes Piccolo Jr. is referred to as the son of the Demon King. He is more so seen as the reincarnation of King Piccolo. But if we follow the logic set by evil boo absorbing good boo, fusing with yourself just makes you stronger. Look at Super 17 as well. You just become a super version of yourself. Hence, Super Boo and Super 17. So, Super Piccolo, I guess. Gohan Age Change. So, Gohan's age throughout Dragon Ball Z and even Super is pretty confusing, especially because of the English translations both in the anime as well as the manga. The real confusion begins in the Cell Saga though, where most people will recognize this Gohan as Teen Gohan, when in fact he's 11 years old. So this is more like a pre-teen Gohan, and the adult Gohan from the Buu Saga is actually about 16 years old, the actual teen Gohan. I mean, he's going to high school at the beginning of the arc. And in Super, well, he's also sometimes now called Teen Gohan. What? This also happened to Trunks too during the Goku Black arc, like, excuse me? A little light on the teen Toei, this man is pushing 30. No, scratch that, he, he's already 30, isn't he? Teen? Really? I think this confusion comes from the translation of the word used in Japanese for teen, but that's getting a little bit off track. Back to the Gohan situation. Because in some versions, Gohan is said to be 18 during the Buu Saga, which would put Gohan at about 11 during the Cell Saga, when in reality he's 16 during the Buu Saga, and during the Cell Saga he's somehow even younger at about 9 or 10. But then there's the whole thing with the year spent in the time chamber, so physically he's a year older. I don't know man, at this point my brain just hurts. Long story short, Gohan is 10, physically 11 during his fight with Cell, and 16, physically 17 by the time of the Buu Saga. Super Perfect Cell went Super Saiyan 2. We all know that when Cell blew up and regenerated himself, somehow he was able to learn and perform the instant transmission thanks to Goku. So did he somehow also achieve Super Saiyan 2 despite not being a Saiyan when he came back as Super Perfect Cell? Did his Saiyan cells somehow acquire the transformation? I'm gonna say no. Otherwise, this fight would have went very differently for Gohan. I think the lighting effects that were present when Cell came back were just for show, and to display to the audience that Cell had pretty much closed the gap in power. Although some still do think he at least uses some kind of Super Saiyan power during the fights, as he could be seen with a SSJ-like aura. Although again, probably just a stylistic choice. Ginyu's Original Body 
Really, really cool theory here, and honestly one of my favorites. No surprises though, given it's one of my favorite villains in Z, but think about it, Ginyu's body change technique. If he is easily willing to use it on Goku and even Vegeta, surely this can't be his original body. Maybe this form we know him for using is not even his original body. Instead, maybe just that of a strong warrior he encountered stronger than himself and chose to take. Maybe he's even gone through many different forms, which does actually seem to be the case given that Jace recognizes this technique when he uses it on Goku. So what do you guys think Ginyu's original body actually looks like? However, to actually play devil's advocate here, in GT and Z we do see him in hell in his purple body so maybe this isn't really the case. Although according to a Dragon Ball Z strategy guide, Ginyu used his powers as a child to switch bodies with a rich kid in his class, but I'm not exactly sure how canon this thing is. Future Android 16 this is another future counterpart featured in Xenoverse 2 of Android 16, who once again is mind controlled by Toa, who you fight in the game's altered timeline. Xenomorph inspired third form Frieza. Well, this one is pretty simple, but just look at the two side by side. They look remarkably similar, and it is definitely inspired by the iconic alien from, well, Alien, released in 1979. Boo represents America. This is a pretty infamous theory I remember hearing back in the day. Quite a bit of a stretch, but still a fascinating one to look at. It was first posted about on the r slash fan theory subreddit, and states that Majin Buu could possibly be a representation of America from the perspective of the Japanese people, specifically during World War II. Even though this is a pretty out there theory, I really like how this user articulated this, so I'm just gonna read it out. Quote, Overweight, emotionally unstable, and absurdly powerful, Majin Buu was created through dark sorcery and with the power of the closest thing DBZ has to Satan, Dabura. Immediately after Majin Buu's creation, he destroys one of his creators, US Revolution, because he didn't like the way he was being treated. Buu goes on a rampage, not killing people outright, instead he transforms them into food and consumes them whole, in some cases becoming slightly more powerful in the process, US imperialism. After an unpleasant but altogether insignificant episode of emotional trauma, Boo is so conflicted that he splits himself in half, and the two fight to the death, US Civil War. The evil side wins and consumes the rest of Boo, becoming more powerful and wicked than ever before. The rest of the Boo saga, World War II, is just a long brutal war between the Z fighters and Boo. Boo carelessly kills millions of innocents during the struggle, but eventually the Z fighters are able to defeat him, with the aid of a demigod. And Boo ends up returning later as an ally, an incredibly powerful but childish ally who is in need of guidance from the more experienced and wise Goku. Here are some side things that don't really fit the timeline, but work with the theme. When Vegeta first encounters Majin Buu and realizes he is not powerful enough to win, he makes a noble sacrifice and goes kamikaze. The one time Majin Buu destroys a city instead of eating it, the episode with the blind kid, the city doesn't explode in a sphere of light as is traditional in DBZ, it is engulfed in a distinctive mushroom cloud. So what do you guys think? Convinced yet? Well, it's definitely one way to look at it, I guess. Honestly, this reminds me of the Toy Story 3 Holocaust theory. Also, the evil side winning the Civil War? I don't know about all that, Chief. And the Z Fighters are the Axis powers in this context of the Boo Saga being World War II? Uh, yeah, this theory definitely has quite a few holes, to say the least. Still, it's definitely an interesting outlook on the character. Looking back at it all. This is another Dragon Ball Z TV special which is very rare and is often confused with the other one we discussed, the Summer Vacation special. This was premiered on December 31st of 1993 and also features Gohan and Goku talking and recapping the story. But instead of the movies, Goku and his family talk about the events of the Cell games as well as the filler Otherworld Tournament saga. Kamehameha named from Hawaiian King. A pretty standard and well-known fact, but yes, Goku's most iconic technique is named after the King of Hawaii who conquered and united all the islands by 1810, and Toriyama actually said he got this idea from his wife, who suggested he name the attack after the Hawaiian King. Kaiser Neko in Resurrection of F Kaiser Neko, also known as Scott Frerichs, sorry if I butchered that, is a voice actor and one of the founding members of Team 4 Star, and appeared in the Resurrection F English dub as one of Frieza's soldiers. Superman Inspiration 
The similarities between Goku and Superman were already pretty substantial, even before the Dragon Ball Minus and Broly stuff, but at least there are some differences. Like, they're both aliens from a strong race sent to Earth by their parents before their planet is destroyed and eventually become the protectors of Earth, yada yada yada. But with the Bardock special, we got additional context. Plus, there was the added twist of Goku being sent there to conquer the planet, a cool subversion of that Superman backstory. But nope, they ditched that in favor of basically just copying the Superman backstory outright, with Bardock just being a generic good guy, and with Goku not being sent to conquer the planet, just being sent away somewhere to be safe. At least Goku and Superman's similarities basically end there. I mean, their personalities are completely different. Also, secret here, Goku's way cooler, but you didn't hear that from me? At least Goku from Dragon Ball Z. I don't really know who this guy is. Super Saiyan Grade 5 Some of the most overlooked transformations in Dragon Ball are the Super Saiyan Grades, going from the 1st all the way to 5th grade, all achieved during the Cell Saga. However, Full Power Super Saiyan or Grade 4 is kind of the last one, which is the one used by Goku against Cell, as the next one after this would just be Super Saiyan 2, which I guess you could classify as Grade 5. El Manga Legendario some obscure Dragon Ball merch here as far as I'm aware, as it's described in a post on the Konzenshu forums by user Nofno as a collection of figures that come with a magazine, including short Toriyama interview statements and facts about his life, as well as other information from the modeler of each figure itself. Some of these have been translated in the actual post, and there is so much info here, take a look for yourself if you're interested. Cut Bulma in Budokai 3 Yes, in Budokai 3, Bulma was actually going to be featured as a playable fighter. In fact, they got really far into development before it was scrapped, complete with a model, voice lines, and everything. Although she was likely cut due to it being too hard to balance such a character given that she can't fly or use key blasts. And they found a way around this with Videl and Mr. Satan, but I guess they just didn't know what to do here. You can actually use the character if you hack the game, but she doesn't have any attacks. Although she can still fly and deflect key blasts, interestingly enough. Macy's Parade Balloon Every year since 1924, an annual parade is held in New York City presented by Macy's, and usually features some cool balloons and floats, and in 2018 they debuted a Super Saiyan Blue Goku balloon promoting the release of Dragon Ball Super Broly. Wait, they made the guy from Fortnite into a real thing? That's crazy. Goten slash Gohan replace Goku this is a common theory amongst fans, which is easy to understand when you look at the trajectory of the early Buu saga. Goku does return, but he takes a back seat, only being there for one day. Which, I mean, the arc is basically one day, but whatever. Acting as a teacher and a master to teach the fusion dance and to say his goodbyes to his friends, with Gohan and possibly even Goten looking like they might take over the role of main character, with Goku returning to Otherworld. However, obviously this doesn't happen. Gohan just wasn't exactly fit to be a main character. He's a fan favorite, don't get me wrong, but he's more of a passive character, whereas Goku is more active, pursuing fights and stronger opponents to increase the drama in the story. Still, Gohan and even Goten and Trunks got their time to shine for a little bit in the Buu saga, which was cool, before they all took a heavy, and I mean a heavy, backseat for Dragon Ball Super, which to be honest, just should be renamed the Goku Vegeta show. Although Superhero did basically rectify this mistake, at least for the duration of that movie, and hopefully Goten and Trunks also get more screen time in the future. But we all know Goku isn't going anywhere as the protagonist, and everyone's pretty much cool with that. But just let our side characters shine just a little bit more. Still waiting on that Tien, Yamcha, and Krillin movie by the way, Toei. Let's make it happen. XV Anti-Pervert Camera at first I was like, what the f was this? But then I found out this is talking about the game Xenoverse again. Apparently if you zoom in on certain characters like Bikini Videl or Toa using photo mode, they will actually disappear even though this isn't programmed to happen with all outfits and characters. Yamamoto Plagiarism this one really, really hurts. I'm not gonna lie, the Yamamoto scores from the Dragon Ball games are my childhood. Amazing music, some of the best I've heard in a DBZ game. Actually, in any game, really. Which is why it's unfortunate that a lot of his work is actually plagiarized. Like, some of these are really obvious too, which is sad because he really is still a talented composer. That much is obvious. But there were just too many instances to ignore, and he was subsequently fired from Toei, as he was working on the OST for Dragon Ball Z Kai at the time and his soundtrack was replaced, and when Budokai 1 and 3 were eventually remastered, that OST was also replaced. Two Bardocks 
I'm not really sure exactly what this is referring to, possibly the Dragon Ball Super version of Bardock, which is very different from the Dragon Ball Z version, which would make sense given they are almost completely different. I know I said it before, but they tried to make Bardock seem like a good guy in Dragon Ball Minus and in Broly, which I wasn't a big fan of. I much prefer the morally grey sort of villain like Bardock, who still protected his son despite him being an evil planet conquering Saiyan himself. Takahata in Xenoverse 2 This is another member of Team 4 Star who voice acted in Xenoverse as the Future Warrior and Future Warrior 2, and can be selected from the voice presets when making your character as male voice option 8. There are even some in-jokes from Abridged included in these voice lines when using certain moves and transformations. Crimson Masked Saiyan this is hilarious to a non-heroes watcher, but this is apparently another masked Saiyan that is actually revealed to be Goku Black. Like why does he even need to wear a mask? Also I love these masked Saiyans always have Goku's hairstyle so it really just narrows down the list of suspects to like 4 people at most, but he serves as the primary antagonist of the new Space Time War Saga, which is episodes 33 through 40 of the anime. Dokkan Spoiled Mastered UI to be honest, I don't remember Dokkan spoiling UI, but actually Toriyama himself. Well, not him personally, but a random drawing of his that got leaked showing Goku with his iconic white hair, although his design looks rather different from what we see in the anime, having a much slimmer build similar to that of Super Saiyan God, rather than the muscular UI from the anime. Although Toyotaro would later adopt this approach in the manga, but honestly this drawing just looks like a Super Saiyan God Goku that was repainted in Photoshop. No hate Toriyama, but you gotta admit it. It kind of looks that way. But I think this refers to Dokkan's scans of one of the units, which revealed the design of Mastered Ultra Instinct before it actually debuted, although I couldn't find the actual source image. Revenge of King Piccolo Revenge of King Piccolo is one of the only recent OG Dragon Ball games, released on the Wii in 2009. It's an arcade style beat em up where you play as Goku through the Red Ribbon and Demon King Piccolo sagas, and is generally well received as far as Dragon Ball games from this era go. Majin Buu's Origins Despite many people believing that Bibidi was the creator of Majin Buu, Toriyama stated in an interview that Majin Buu has existed since time immemorial, meaning that we don't actually know where Majin Buu came from, and Bobbidi and Bibidi only attempted to control this ancient evil, and I kinda like this. The fact that Majin Buu is just basically the embodiment of pure evil and has been around since the dawn of time. That's also kinda supposed to be Janemba's gimmick, but he's kinda just a reskin of Kid Buu anyways, although a really cool looking one at that, but still. I like that Buu is this uncontrollable violent entity, like a force of nature in the Dragon Ball universe, going into hibernation only to pursue his reign of terror whenever he wakes up. King Furry Knows of Goku's Deeds Here's a character no one probably even remembers from OG Dragon Ball, King Furry. What a name by the way. But this guy is like the King of Earth in OG Dragon Ball, and is featured during the King Piccolo Saga. And he's one of the only people that knows Goku and his friends are the heroes of the Cell Saga and not Mr. Satan, as he knows firsthand what he is capable of thanks to the events of OG Dragon Ball, and even tries to award him with a medal. Society Survival Saga this was an April Fool's joke in 2017 that was posted on Toei's official website and their Twitter as a spin-off to the Universal Survival Saga, which was airing at the time, and actually had three audio episodes released, where the main characters joined DB Commercial Affairs. These alternate business style outfits would then later appear in Dragon Ball Heroes. Gods of Destruction Based on Alcohol this is pretty common knowledge by now, but the Gods of Destruction, as well as the Angels, are all named after some kind of alcohol. Beerus and Whis are pretty obvious, being beer and whiskey. Champa and Vados, champagne and vodka. Liquor and corn are, well, just liquor and corn. Kitela, tequila, rum she, rum, you get the idea. Villains inspired by editor. Where would we be in the Dragon Ball franchise if not for the editors? There have been a few, and they definitely have had an influence over many aspects of the manga, including most famously who the villains of the Android Saga would be. First you had Android 19 and 20, but wait, this guy's too old and this guy's too fat. Android 17 and 18 show up? Nah, but these are just like some bratty kids or something. Then we get Cell. Uh, this guy kinda looks like a bug or something, I don't know. Semi-perfect Cell. Uh, doesn't this guy look too stupid or something? Perfect. 
Not actually how that went, by the way, but basically it was something like that. I mean, think about it. We cycled through like five different villains through the course of this arc, and it still turned out great. Wouldn't have had it any other way, actually. But another interesting fact is that some believe that Frieza was inspired by one of his editors specifically, that being Yukondo, although Toriyama has since denied this. Broly and Paragus ate beats. A very dark theory from Dragon Ball Super Broly, but one that might make a little sense. See, when Broly and Paragus fled Planet Vegeta and landed on Planet Vampa, they also had with them another Saiyan called Beats, who Paragus coldly murders in the beginning of the film, and both Broly and Paragus are later seen wearing his clothes. So maybe they also cannibalized the poor Saiyan if they couldn't find any food. Although not likely the case, seeing they were able to live on the planet for so long. But just the fact that they killed him and stole his stuff is Brutal enough, honestly. Toyotaro plagiarism. Uh oh, it's come to this. So there have been quite a few accusations of Toyotaro plagiarizing other works, some more egregious than others, but the biggest one that was really brought up into the spotlight was this sketch of Goku from the cover of V-Jump compared to this one of Captain America from Captain Marvel Volume 1. Now, I'm no expert in drawing or anything, but if this isn't traced, it's heavily inspired clearly by this piece, but even then this does seem blatantly just traced from the side-by-side -side comparison. The artist even referenced the incident on Twitter as a trace, so there you go. Not to go in on Toyotaro too much, but he also traces his own poses very frequently, reusing the same shots of characters over and over again throughout his manga, and frankly, despite some really good panels he's done, I will admit, He's not my favorite manga artist by any means. Definitely gotten better over the years, but nowhere near Toriyama's level. Speaking of, there are even instances of Toyotaro either tracing or just directly referencing Toriyama's work and even shots from the anime. Like I get a cool reference here and there, but doing it all the time is a bit much. Frieza vs Goku was 7 minutes. So we already talked about the 5 minutes thing, and in a video on YouTube by user Tyzak, they actually sped it up to meet that mark. However, as some have pointed out, the fight is actually 7 minutes, because there are 5 minutes that go by before Frieza says that the planet should have exploded by now, and then estimates that there are 2 minutes left, and if this time he's actually right, it would put the fight at now 7 minutes long. 4x3 Movies Pretty simple fact here, but the Dragon Ball and DBZ movies were all produced and animated with a 4x3 aspect ratio instead of 16x9, and were later cropped in home media and even theatrical releases to be viewed in 16x9. Tao killed Mr. Satan's master. Some more juicy lore revealed through an interview with Toriyama. This is actually the same one that says Majin Buu wasn't created by Bibidi and has just existed forever basically, but also it gives an interesting backstory regarding Mr. Satan. It reads, quote, When Mr. Satan was young, he attended a fighting dojo called Satan Castle. Through a combination of considerable power and good luck, his rival fighting opponent would get food poisoning for instance, he quickly became world champion and was called Mr. Satan after the name of his dojo. One day, at a bar in South City where they were on tour, Satan and his martial arts master made the mistake of making fun of Tao Pai Pai's hairstyle. His master was killed, and Satan was heavily injured. From then on, Mr. Satan solemnly swore never to fight anyone whose true identity he didn't know, or anyone who seemed crazy strong. So yeah, it gives a little more insight into his character, why he's such a coward and afraid of strong foes, but also humanizes him a little bit more. Also cool that it was Tao as well. The Real 4D Released in 2016, this is a cinematic attraction of Dragon Ball Z found in Universal Studios Japan, which is a 3D or 4D CG animation of a fight between Goku and Frieza. In the animation, Frieza is yet again revived, and Goku has to kill him yet again, and this time the Spear Bomb actually gets the job done. The animation is really high quality, despite the art style being strangely video game-like, looking almost like Unreal Engine or Jump Force or something. Japanese audio quality. The Japanese audio quality of the Dragon Ball Z broadcast is rather infamous for its sounding, well. Yeah, it doesn't exactly sound like the original audio, and that's because it's not. Toei lost the audio masters, and for a time it became lost media, with there only being this subpar Japanese audio track. Same situation with OG Dragon Ball as well. However, fans meticulously collected recordings from the original broadcasts, and by June of 2017, all of Dragon Ball Z was found and made available, with Dragon Ball following three years later in 2020. 
Dragon Ball inspired Naruto and One Piece. A very well known fact, basically every battle shonen from back in the day owes something to Dragon Ball. It's one of the most influential mangas ever made. That includes all of the old big three, Naruto, Bleach, and even One Piece. The only one of these that is still ongoing to this day. Goku's Clairvoyance. This refers to an ability Goku used on Namek and briefly in the beginning of the Android Saga and then they just kind of forgot about. Like he read Krillin's mind when he got to Namek and also searched Trunks' feelings to know that he wouldn't hit him with his sword. He even used psychic abilities in DBS Broly to communicate with Piccolo which was cool, but besides that they pretty much kind of forgot about all this. But Tomo based on Winnie the Pooh. This one's pretty obvious, I mean just look at these two side by side, not much else to really say about it. Power Rangers number 39, Broly Homage. This is really cool and I had no idea about this, but the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 39 has a special cover variant that is an homage to the poster of Dragon Ball Super Broly. Chaozu is an Emperor. I also had no idea about this, apparently I forgot to watch the third Dragon Ball movie, Mystical Adventure, which portrays Chaozu as an emperor of a country called Mifon. But other than that, it roughly adapts the Red Ribbon Army and 22nd World Tournament arcs together into one movie. Tier 5 Tokyo Skytree the Tokyo Skytree is the tallest structure in Japan and a broadcasting tower which is a common tourist attraction. But this entry is talking about a special event held there promoting Dragon Ball Super Broly, which showcased an exclusive OVA where Goku has the Dragon Balls collected at the Skytree but then goes to King Kai while Frieza sneaks over and summons Shenron before the two fight it out. Puar's Gender Misconception Puar is an interesting little guy, or girl, or What's this thing's gender? I always thought they were a guy, although it's kind of unclear. However, Toriyama has gone on to say in interviews that he wrote the manga thinking that Puar was male, but as you probably are aware, Puar is almost always only voiced by female voice actors, and Puar is referred to as female in the Funimation Dragon Ball dub, so honestly it could go either way I guess. Frieza Genome I think this refers to the DNA of Frieza, maybe? Although there is also just a character named Genome who is from Dragon Ball Heroes and is a purple cell-like android, or could it be just referring to Frieza and King Cold's DNA, which were used in the creation of Cell, Dr. Giro's greatest android? I mean, to be honest, I don't really know. Universe 6 Saiyans are Universe 7 counterparts. Since Universe 6 is said to be the sister universe to the 7th, as is the case with any two universes when added together that equals 13, a little confusing, but this is also the case with 1 and 12, 2 and 11, you get the idea. Twin universes, that's why there are Saiyans in Universe 6, and just based off their looks and personalities, it's easy to see the parallels between the main Saiyans of Universe 6 and their Universe 7 counterparts. With Kaba obviously being Vegeta, even using his Gallic Gun technique and becoming a student, Kale being Broly, no need to really even explain that one, and Khalifa being Goku, the excited one that just wants to fight stronger opponents and get stronger herself. European Portuguese dub. Another dub here, this time airing in Portugal in 1995 for the original anime, which was based on the French dub and inherited some of their naming quirks, with DBZ, Kai, GT, and even Super being dubbed later on, although the dub of Super would not be finished. Also I'm not sure if this is the exact Portuguese dub this is referring to, but I have to show you guys this clip, I was f***ing dying. <laughs> What is it Gohan? You look sad. What's wrong? As far as I could tell, this is a sad quote that could be heard in the game's Raging Blast 2 as well as Budokai Tenkaichi 3 when playing as future Gohan and fighting against Goku. Dad! What is it Gohan? You look sad. What's wrong? Krillin has physical idiosyncrasy. 
I mentioned this casually earlier, but Krillin doesn't have a nose. Toriyama forgot to draw it one time, and now it just became who he is. And at this point, drawing him with a nose makes him look kind of cursed. But that begs the question, how does this man even breathe? He can't just be a mouth breather, right? Well, he's not. Toriyama even has an explanation for this, hilariously enough, stating he has a physical idiosyncrasy that lets him breathe through the pores of his skin. Super Saiyan God inspired Kaioken. I've never thought about this before, but this is actually kind of a cool theory, because as we know, Kaioken in itself is a godly technique in that it is taught to Goku by King Kai, and is used to amplify the user's power at the cost of their body, and gives off a menacing red aura. Now I like to think that King Kai, or whoever invented this, saw the original Super Saiyan God and tried to recreate the power and aura, and this was the end product. But this could also just be referring to the transformation of Super Saiyan God itself, being inspired by how Kaioken Ken looked in the show and in the manga with its red aura, but honestly it was probably more so inspired by Toriyama's original red hair trunks transformation from the Cell Saga, if anything. Android 19 slash 20 Retcon so not sure what the retcon is here, maybe this is referring to the fact that 19 and 20 aka Dr. Jiro were originally going to be the main villains of the Android Saga, but since Toriyama's editor didn't like them, instead they changed the story so that they weren't the main androids from Trunks' timeline, which led to the creation of 17 and 18, or maybe it's about where 19 and 20 were in Trunks' timeline because he never encountered them. Well, not sure about 19, but Jiro was similarly killed by the androids in the future timeline which explains why Trunks never even encountered him. Beerus is significantly stronger than Champa. This makes sense considering, according to the manga, he is probably the strongest of all the gods of destruction, because very interestingly, the Zeno exhibition is much different. Rather than pitting mortals from the two weakest universes against each other, they had all the gods fight each other battle royale style, although they all ended up ganging up on Beerus thanks to this all being his and Goku's fault. But even then, he managed to hold his own, and even used Ultra Instinct in the fight, heavily implying he's the strongest of them all. Which also makes sense given he called Goku his second strongest foe, second only to Whis. Beerus really is that guy. Toriyama dislikes drawing tails. So some people think because of the few shortcuts Toriyama took in writing and illustrating the Dragon Ball manga, he is somehow lazy, which is definitely not the case. You gotta realize, making a manga chapter every week is almost impossible. It's incredibly stressful and you don't get to sleep or really do anything else, you have to be truly dedicated, which he was, and it's why he wanted to make things a lot easier for himself in any way he could, be it making Goku Super Saiyan hair blonde or white in the manga so that he didn't have to color it in, taking the kanji off of Goku's gi, or even getting rid of Saiyan tails because they were too much of a pain to draw. Which is likely why Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and basically every other main Saiyan no longer has a tail. Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 has God Key. Interesting theory here, I guess, but obviously there was no such thing as God Key when GT was made. Although Gogeta SSJ4 and Omega Shenron do have this weird plus minus energy thing going on, but to be honest, I never really understood that part, and I was kind of mentally just checked out at that point in my watch through of GT. Maybe this just has to do with the fact that they both have red auras, though? I mean, I don't really know. Androids are cyborgs. Yes, prepare to have your whole Dragon Ball worldview shattered. In Japanese, the androids are called Jinzo Ningen, which basically means artificial humans. But the English term used is androids, which by definition is a robot that looks like a person, so that checks out with 16. But Jiro, 17, and 18, they aren't actually androids, they're mechanically enhanced humans, making them cyborgs. So I guess the term android was just chosen as a blanket term because some are actually androids, while some are just cyborgs, and it would be confusing to differentiate them. But add to the confusion, the androids are also referred to in Japanese as C-17 and C-18, like actual cyborgs, which would be a bit more accurate. General Blue related to Samuel. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie guys, when I watched Dragon Ball the OG, I used a filler guide and just skipped all the filler, so I didn't even know about this, but apparently there was a filler episode with General Blue called Strange Visitor, which is definitely a strange one. It's a crossover with Dr. Slump. In the English version, he says he has a lost brother named Samuel, however that is only in the English version, as in the original Japanese, Blue was actually attracted to the character Obachamon, who is a 13 year old boy, which is why they ended up changing this part. Dragon Ball Symphonic Adventure 
This is an orchestral concert that tours the world playing various songs from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, which has a Canada tour happening right now in 2023. Super Butoden 2 English Some Dragon Ball Lost media here. The Lost English localization of the SNES game Super Butoden 2 released in 1996. This is really interesting because the dub was being produced by Funimation around the time they started dubbing DBZ, which is weird because there are many characters and story elements from the Cell Saga which obviously they were nowhere close to yet in the story. However, apparently it was cancelled and all we have on it is an article from Club Nintendo Mexico. Gohan's Rice Commercial so I think this is referring to Gohan Desuyo, which is a seaweed paste product which translates to something like That's Rice, that also had a short Dragon Ball Z Kai commercial in Japan. Take a look. DBS manga isn't canon. God, I hope it's not. No, but seriously, I can't pretend Roshi dodging Jiren actually happened in the canon universe. I just can't. That being said, I don't really have to because the canon of Dragon Ball Super is so confusing at this point that there are basically two separate canons, the anime and the manga. As the manga is now way ahead of the anime, but also adapted the anime's arcs and made them way different, leaving out certain transformations and moments, but adding in new ones, for better or worse. Although, since Toriyama works fairly closely with Toyotaro, it's probably safe to say, unfortunately, that the manga is the more definitive version. Leaked Funimation VA So yeah, I definitely can't be showing any of these here, but they are out there. Some pretty funny, but some also very weird and strange leaks of the Dragon Ball English dub voice actors saying generally weird shit, and some of these are absolutely wild. Like if you don't want to ruin your image of some of the show's most classic voices, then don't look these up. That being said, shout out to Kami's Sacred Ointment. Dr. Rota's Special Ability Okay, remember when we talked about the hit clone theory from the Tournament of Power? Well, this was another big one. More of a joke, really, but still a really funny theory going around the community while the Universal Survival Saga was airing about this guy right here, Dr. Rota, who some believed had some crazy special ability, however we never got to see what that was, because every time he was about to say what his ability was, he would just be comedically one-shotted. Dragon Ball Absalon Dragon Ball Absalon is one of the biggest fan animation projects ever, and is a sequel to the ending of GT. It's also been going on for a very long time, since 2012 even, meaning these are some of the most dedicated creators I've seen in the fan animation game, with an episode even coming out last year. Give it a watch if you're into these Dragon Ball fan animations. Adventures of Tongpu this is another one-shot manga by Toriyama published in 1983 that laid some of the groundwork for Dragon Ball alongside Dragon Boy, of course. It follows the character of Tongpu, a cybernetic boy who is sent to Earth to investigate it and ends up meeting a girl named Plamo, and together they end up fighting aliens. Sound a little familiar? Plamo is not only a lot like Bulma visually, but she also even uses the capsules, which would become quite iconic to her character in Dragon Ball. Hyper Dimension here we have yet another game, a fighting game title released in Japan in 1996 for the Super Famicom and later the SNES in Europe. It includes characters from the Frieza Saga to the end of DBZ, featuring a story mode as well as verses and world tournament modes. It is also part of the Butoden series and is pretty well received by fans. Legendary Super Warriors this game released in 2002 is a turn-based strategy title made for the Game Boy Color, and this time actually tells almost the entire DBZ story aside from the Raditz Saga, going from Vegeta's invasion of Earth to Kid Buu. There's also a multiplayer mode and 48 playable characters. Dragon Ball Hoshi this was apparently a pretty big rumor back in the day in the Dragon Ball community in 2011 of a sequel to GT called Dragon Ball Hoshi, which was started thanks to a post that circulated around reading, quote, Akira Toriyama is to be making a new Dragon Ball series alongside mangaka Naho Oishi, the creator of the 2008 Dragon Ball Z special Yo Son Goku and Friends Return, called Dragon Ball Hoshi. Oishi will be making a manga that continues the Z manga past the Buu saga, 
It will have a newly designed Super Saiyan 4 and even a Super Saiyan 5. Akira Toriyama will be assisting her and backing off. The events in Japan, earthquake, tsunami, slowed this down, now Toriyama is taking care of that. Launch in 2012 slash 2013. Most people realize though, I'm sure that this was pretty far-fetched, although it did get a good amount of searches on Google after this rumor spread. And it wasn't entirely wrong. Yeah, no Dragon Ball Hoshi, but the Dragon Ball Renaissance would start in 2013 with Toriyama's involvement with Battle of Gods, which led to Resurrection F, and eventually the creation of a new Dragon Ball anime. Although definitely not a continuation of GT, but still. Q-Tai Panic Adventure this is another One Piece Dragon Ball crossover episode that also featured Astro Boy, interestingly enough, and aired in 2003 in Japan and was actually an interactive feature screened at special events in Japan on multi-screen displays. They went with the tried and true Goku vs Frieza formula, with Frieza attacking tourists at Fuji TV HQ or something like that, with Goku and his friends stepping in as well as Luffy and the Straw Hats and even Astro Boy. Super Tenkaichi Budokai this is the sequel to the original Dragon Ball Z 4D thing we talked about. This one is called Dragon Ball Z The Real 4D at Super Tenkaichi Budokai, or the alternate funnier title, Dragon Ball Z The Real 4D at the Super Number 1 Under Heaven Martial Arts Gathering. And it says this thing released in June of 2017, which if that's the case, this thing is super ahead of its time, because it mainly features a fight between Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Broly in a new god form. But the poster even shows Blue Gogeta. So, yeah, basically DBS Broly, the movie. Cell Absorbs Krillin. Shout out to the original Budokai, I remember this weird what if episode in this story, where basically Cell, instead of absorbing 18, actually absorbs Krillin, which creates this Cell in abomination. Although it's all later revealed to be a nightmare, so this is my new headcanon now, thanks. But anyway, just to meme on him even further, you get to play as Cell and fight Yamcha, disrespecting my man with one of the weirdest fusions imaginable. But Tien cleans up the mess and Cell wakes up. Always loved these strange what if things they did in these games. They were always a fun change of pace from the standard DBZ story we played through a million times. Toho's Dragon Ball Room. So this refers to a metaphorical, I guess, Dragon Ball room at Toei, where they discuss all things Dragon Ball related. Might be a literal room too, I guess, but this is just where the company decides where they want to take the series moving forward in terms of the anime, if it's ever gonna come back, and how to actually go about that, as well as how to proceed with these movies. The scripts from Toriyama as well, and all that stuff. Also, I said Toei, but the entry does say Toho, which is the company that I believe usually distributes the films, but Toei is the animation studio that primarily produces the actual films, as well as the anime, so I'm guessing that's what this is actually talking about. The BLT dub. Alright, so we're about to go through a couple more dubs here. This being Funimation's first dub of Dragon Ball, which only had 13 episodes produced back in 1995 before they chose to just move on to DBZ, which would garner them major success, whereas this original Dragon Ball dub did not perform as well. Venus Centered Dub. I believe this refers to an Arabic dub of the series, releasing in 2002, but only running for 52 episodes before it was cancelled. They also did the first three Dragon Ball movies. The Speedy Dub The Speedy Dub is also called the Malaysian Dub, even though it is actually just another English adaptation of some of the Dragon Ball and DBZ movies, and was sold primarily on home media, having quite a few interesting name changes and even a different soundtrack. Universe 6 has no HFIL. Like we talked about earlier, HFIL is the censored version of Hell in Dragon Ball, so I guess this is just suggesting that Universe 6, for whatever reason, doesn't have a Hell, but there's not much to actually back this up, and because they are supposed to be twin universes, it would make much more sense if there was one, given it also has Saiyans and even their own Frieza. Every film is a what if. This is pretty much true because the DBZ movies are all non-canon, even though they do kind of fit in the timeline of the series if you want to make that work. Like, they are all told within the confines of the story as it's seen in the show, and they just kind of try to put these movies between arcs where they can, so that in a way they're just kind of fun what-if scenarios. Still waiting on Cooler to be canon, by the way. Number of Spain Dubs 
Back to dubs again. I guess this just refers to the amount of Spanish dubs for the series, suggesting there are a ton of them, which would make sense given we already discussed how big of a thing Dragon Ball is in South America and Spanish speaking countries in general. All around the world really, so yeah, with there being so many English dubs, like too many to count, you know there's going to be a ton of Spanish dubs out there. But this entry says Spain dubs, so maybe even just the country of Spain in particular has a bunch, and from what I saw there are at least five main ones, so yeah. Salad Saiyan YouTube Salad Saiyan is another YouTube Dragon Ball content creator who focuses on those what if stories and scenarios narrated and presumably written by him. Disney owns film rights. So apparently as a part of the Disney-Fox merger, Disney now possibly owns the distribution rights to Dragon Ball films. However, that doesn't mean that they can just make their own bad film, to my understanding, because the rights to make these actual movies are still in the hands of Shueisha and Toei Animation. Club Dorothy popularized Dragon Ball in France. So this could very well be the case, however I don't have much info on this from English speaking Google, but I did find that this Club Dorothy was a TV program that ran in the 80s and 90s, and was aimed at children and played various cartoons including Dragon Ball, which could have contributed to its popularity in the country. Demigra is Goku Black. Okay wow, I've heard some crazy Goku Black theories in my day, but this, this takes the cake. Back then you had the usual suspects, a body changed Goku which ended up being true, Goten which was out there but still plausible, and even Turles, but this is just wild. I couldn't even really find anyone that actually believed this as a theory online, but I guess this stems from the fact that he's also a time traveling evil guy, I mean that's about where the similarities end. I mean I guess he's also like a god like Goku Black because he's a Masu in reality but I thought this theory was that Demigra was him. I don't even know what I'm saying, bro. I'm confusing myself here. Besides, Demigra's not even canon. He's from Xenoverse, so whatever. Super Saiyan 3 film is stronger than Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue. This obviously isn't a real thing. It can just seem that way given how much Super Saiyan Blue gets bodied in Dragon Ball Super by just about everyone. Like, my man Goku's out here using Blue on Android 17 and Krillin. Wow! But when you see SSJ3 in the films, you know it's on. Think back to Fusion Reborn and Wrath of the Dragon. They actually put some respect on this usually disrespected form and made it look way stronger than it really is. Then Battle of Gods came along and uh, yeah, rip SSJ3 and he never used it again basically. Just kidding, he used it like once in the TLP for like 5 seconds, but then never again. Granted, it does kind of make sense because it like drains you or something like that, and he has access to way more powerful transformations at this point, but it still hurts to fans of this form. Rumshi being Ganesha. So it's clear that the gods of destruction were inspired by alcohol for their names, but you might have also noticed that they are inspired by ancient gods as well, such as with Beerus and the Egyptian god Anubis. Same thing here with Rumshi and the Hindu god Ganesha, who is also typically depicted with an elephant head. Chaozu is a vampire. A lot of deep cut Chaozu lore on this iceberg, and I'm not complaining. Apparently Chaozu's interesting design is actually based on Jiangxi, vampires from Chinese mythology usually depicted with pale white skin and red cheeks. They also aren't usually able to walk, or at least walk normally, which is interesting because for the most part, Chaozu doesn't either, all that much at least, I mean think about it. For the 5 seconds of total scream time he's had, he's pretty much always just flying. Dragon Ball Online Referenced it a couple times already, but uh, Dragon Ball Online is an MMORPG that released in the early 2010s, and provided the foundation for a lot of the lore and characters for Dragon Ball Xenoverse. It likewise also contains character customization, with Namekians, humans, and Majins all being playable as well, and follows a story taking place roughly 250 years after the ending of the original manga. However, the game was short-lived, as the servers would be shut down in 2013, although it did lay a lot of the groundwork for Xenoverse which seems to be a much more polished experience overall. GT Transformation So this is a Dragon Ball game I definitely hadn't heard of prior to this iceberg. It released for the Game Boy Advance in 2005 and is a beat-em-up that covers the story of Dragon Ball GT up to the Baby Saga. Besides the single player campaign, it has a few bonus modes where you fight against waves of enemies, and even this weird multiplayer Piccolo mode where you play as Piccolo fighting clones of himself or something. Tier 6 Legacy of Goku 4 
Legacy of Goku 4 is the cancelled fourth entry in the series that was pitched in 2015 or 2016 and was going to be developed for the 3DS and possibly for mobile as well. However, the company behind it, Webfoot Technologies, were unable to find funding for the project, and the title was scrapped. Budokai 3 GameCube Port So Budokai 3 released on the PS2 and uh... Just the PS2 when it originally came out back in 2004. No GameCube release, despite I guess it being planned, because Budokai 1 and 2 both had GameCube releases, but sadly they couldn't actually get the best one. RIP. Likely this had to do something with the poor GameCube sales of the previous titles. Evolution PSP. Yes, believe it or not, there was actually a Dragon Ball Evolution game made for the PSP, released in 2009 to coincide with the release of the film. It's basically a Shin Budokai title being developed by the same developer, Dimps. However, even IGN hated this game, which is when you know it's bad. It's even called one of the worst fighting games and titles for the PSP ever made. Anyone can use Ultra Instinct. Technically this is true, right? Like it's a technique used mostly by gods, but anyone can learn it, even mortals as shown by Goku, although you likely require training from gods in order to achieve it. Still, it's not exclusive to Saiyans or anything like that. So basically, Ultra Instinct Yamcha win, thanks. Dragon Ball Kart 64 this is a Mario 64 hack featuring Dragon Ball characters created by I'm a Vegeta, where you can play as 8 different characters including Goku, Krillin, Vegeta, Trunks, Frieza, Cell, or Beerus. The hack is even available for download to be played. Kai's Ocean Productions this is another English dub of Dragon Ball Z Kai that was being produced for English speaking stations in Canada and Europe in the early 2010s, although this is actually lost media and no footage has ever been released from this version. Third Form Cooler So we all know Cooler has only two forms, his standard state which is akin to Final Form Frieza, and then his evolved Final Form which is the coolest version, no pun intended. Then there's Metal Cooler, but that's not really another form. He states in the movie to Goku that his base form is actually his third form, and that he reached a state beyond that, the fourth form, which not even Frieza achieved. And you guys probably know by now in the video, but I'm a huge fan of Cooler. But when you stop and think about it, this form doesn't really make any sense given what we know about Frieza's transformations, in that interestingly they work backwards, as in he transforms from final form, which is his base, down to his third, second, and first forms in order to nerf his power, which I always thought was a really cool and unique idea, but this isn't the case with Cooler. Still though, it's an awesome form with a really sick design, so I just let that slide. Nappa Stronger Than Madara Apparently a big rumor in the Naruto fandom was that in an interview with the creator Kishimoto, he stated that Madara is only as strong as Nappa, which I guess he never actually said, but when you think about it, it actually does make a lot of sense. Honestly, if anything, it's being pretty generous to Madara. Like, these two universes are very hard to power scale and compare with one another, because one is about planet slash galaxy destroying aliens versus a show about ninjas. Jiren in Exhibition Match during the Zeno exhibition match, they make it seem like Topo, I mean, sorry, Top, never gonna get used to that name change, is actually the new big boss. What with him crushing Basil's blast with ease, and even keeping up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and even tanking a warp Kamehameha. However, I believe in early images, instead of Top being the hooded man, it was actually Jiren, shown in these promotional images, but for whatever reason they swapped him out for Top and decided to save him for the tournament, which honestly was probably a good move on their part. Two Future Trunks Yes, so this actually happens, because after the Goku Black arc, Trunks' timeline is completely erased by Zeno, which he does not even really react to at all. I mean, nobody really does, but it's like, bruh, Zamasu won, but they act like it didn't even happen. And Whis just ends up taking Trunks and Mai to an alternate timeline, where there is already another Trunks there, meaning there would be two Trunkses in that timeline. And does this just keep happening forever thanks to the paradoxical nature of the Goku Black arc? I'm not sure, this whole time travel stuff is all just very confusing and con convoluted. Goku slash Zero slash Suzycon slash Gogo. So from looking at all these crazy dubs and their weird translations, I'm pretty sure this is just referring to the many interesting names given to Goku in the various dubs throughout the years. Gotta say though, Zero is probably my favorite. Like why was that chosen? So random. Toriyama's Taxes. 
Now this is the type of deep cut I'm here for. In 2017, rumors began to spread around that Toriyama didn't actually pay his taxes and that he was facing some legal troubles. However, in reality, he was just named in a set of documents called the Paradise Papers, which lists confidential information about offshore investments, and among these millions of documents, apparently Toriyama's name came up, with some investments that weren't being properly reported and taxed. Crunchyroll wrote an official statement reading, quote, According to sources, Toriyama had invested in an American company that specialized in real estate, specifically leveraging borrowed money to purchase second-hand apartments. The company came under fire in 2005 when federal tax authorities determined that their methods of accounting, which involved declaring losses through property value depreciation, didn't meet proper regulatory standards. A Supreme Court case in 2015 ruled that investors could be held liable to pay taxes on on these investments. However, it's unclear if anything really came of this, as the matter was likely handled outside of the public eye. Super Saiyan Blue meant to be white. This comes from an interview between Toyotaro and Toriyama, where Toyotaro asks why Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan has blue hair, to which Toriyama jokingly replies, because Battle of Gods had red hair, but further clarifies he played around with having it be white, but decided against it as it would clash with the quote unquote next enemy. Not exactly sure who this is referring to, but this could be either Zamasu or Jiren, although probably not the latter considering MUI is actually white or silver. Future Trunks knows Tapion. So it's implied Tapion somehow knows an older version of Trunks given that he uses a very similar sword to his in the movie Wrath of the Dragon, possibly suggesting it was given to him by Future Trunks, even though that doesn't really make sense given there are no Dragon Balls in Future Trunks' timeline. Or it could be just implying that this is where Kid Trunks first sees the sword and thinks it's cool and just decides to adopt it later on, which I think works a lot better this way. Either way, it's just a cool little easter egg. Jiren is Buddha. Another Dragon Ball theory featured on the DBZ subreddit here. Basically it goes back to the journey of the West, where at the end of the story, Sun Wukong achieves Buddhahood, unlocking a similar power to Jiren that rivals even that of the gods. Because Jiren isn't necessarily a god, yet his power is greater than theirs, with this theory suggesting that he has achieved enlightenment, or unlocked his third eye, which is why most of his powers are actually focused on his eyes. He is also seen meditating quite a lot, specifically mirroring the Buddhist statues but I'm not too sure about all of this, honestly. Murasaki Brothers The Murasaki Brothers are a group of antagonists that try to stop Goku from getting to the top of Muscle Tower. They are claimed to be clones when in reality they are just brothers, and are all actually killed by Android 8 when he destroys Muscle Tower. Except for the oldest one, just Murasaki himself. The names of the brothers are all puns on colors and match with a given member of the Red Ribbon Army, such as Colonel Violet and Murasaki, which means purple or lavender, as well as Cone or Sky Blue, and General Blue. You get the idea. Super Butoden. I've talked about the influence this game has had on many Dragon Ball games moving forward, but the actual first game in the series is a 1993 fighting game released on the SNES. Interestingly, it was also ported to the Switch when Fighters was released as a pre-order bonus. The game has a story mode from the end of Dragon Ball to the end of the Cell Saga and features 13 playable characters. Janimba's Original Design one of the original designs for Janimba features a notably different alternate color scheme, which made him look a lot more like Frieza or cooler. Just to make him look more distinct, I definitely prefer the red and purple color scheme that he has in Fusion Reborn. Other than that, the actual design itself seems pretty much identical. Shenron no Nazo Shenron no Nazo, also known as Shenron's Mystery, this is actually the second ever Dragon Ball game ever made and released on the family computer in Japan in 1986, and would be released in North America in 1988 as Dragon Power. It's a pretty simple 2D game where you play as Goku through the first two volumes of the Dragon Ball story, covering the Pilaf arc. Pure Golden Frieza so I believe True Golden Frieza is actually a real canon transformation, and a mastered state used by Frieza in both the anime and the manga. But Pure Golden Frieza, as far as I could tell, is just a fan-made transformation that has Frieza donning a only gold color scheme without the purple accents. VRVS 
briefly touched on this, but Dragon Ball Z Virtual Reality Versus, or VRVS, is an arcade fighting game from 1994 which is 2D but from a first or third person perspective. I don't know, from what I've seen it's kind of confusing and definitely looks different to say the least. But it only features 5 playable characters, those being Super Saiyan Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Trunks, as well as Piccolo. Ford Commercials in 2015, for whatever reason, we got some pretty epic Ford Focus and Fusion commercials collabing with Dragon Ball Z. Take a look. Now that you have summoned me, what are your three wishes? Well first, we want a car that has an audio system from Sony for listening to our favorite tune. Yeah, tune! Okay, got it. Second, we want another car, but this one comes with a rear view camera so you can see where you're going when you reverse. Actually, you can get both of those things in Finally, a car. third car with an EPA estimated 42 highway miles per gallon in case we need to drive around Planet Namek finding the Dragon Balls again. No, no, all of those features are either standard or available with the Ford Focus. You've just used one word. Yeah, those are our three wishes. Three different cars with three... Enough! I'm just giving you the Ford Focus. Exterior. Built like a true warrior. This fusion, it's unbelievable. I call shotgun! Four Connect. One of the stranger DBZ games ever made, but on paper, a good concept that was not executed very well. It's a Kinect title for the Xbox 360, where you play as Goku and the others in first person throughout the story of Dragon Ball Z, doing the motions to perform a real Kamehameha in real life, like we've always wanted. But the game is quite buggy and doesn't really work as intended, surprise surprise, and has very limited controls as well. Also interestingly, it's one of the only Dragon Ball games to not be released in Japan, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they aren't all too upset about it. Idai Naru Dragon Ball Densetsu I know, I know, we're going through a lot of games here, but this is yet again another fighting game released in 1996 for the PS1 and Sega Saturn. It's actually a 3v3 game like Fighters, but it's more of a 3D arena fighter, and actually has had some quite positive reception since its release. Goten Conceived by an SSJ Goku. Well, maybe this at least explains a bit of the Super Saiyan bargain sale going on in the Buu Saga. Don't know about Trunks though, maybe a similar situation. I'm joking, of course, but this comes from the fact that Goku and Gohan, after leaving the hyperbolic time chamber, remain in Super Saiyan leading up to the Cell games as part of their training. And maybe even Goten was conceived during this time. The Super Saiyan hair stays on during sex, Chi Chi. We have to if we want to beat Cell, or something like that. She's just goaded for surviving that, honestly. Krillin playing Ultimate Battle 22 ad. Kind of a weird name for a Dragon Ball game, Ultimate Battle 22, but it's a 1995 fighting game made for the PlayStation similar to the Super Butoden games. But this entry is just referring to this commercial of Krillin playing the game. Dragon Ball Dai Hikyo. Released in 1986 for the Super Cassette Vision, this is the first ever Dragon Ball console game ever made, translated to English as Dragon Ball The Great Unexplored Dragon Region, or something like that. It's an overhead shooter game where you play as Goku, flying on the Nimbus, shooting at enemies, and collecting Dragon Balls. Dragon Ball Evolution made Toriyama make Battle of Gods. One of the biggest rumors surrounding Battle of Gods is that Toriyama was so disgusted by the Dragon Ball Evolution live action film that he decided to make his own Dragon Ball movie, although that isn't likely how it actually went down. Yes, he's gone on record to say he was disappointed in the movie, but it seems the film was in development before he actually got involved, although it could be true that the reason he wanted to be more involved and actually write the script himself is because of how bad that movie was. So there is something good coming out of Evolution after all, and thank god because the the original Battle of Gods script, not written by Toriyama, was wild. And don't worry, we'll get to that. Toriyama isn't a Vegeta fan. 
This is always funny to me. Because Vegeta tends to get shafted a lot, a lot of fans think Toriyama actually hates Vegeta or doesn't like him as much as the other characters and gives them the spotlight over him. Which may be true, but he obviously doesn't hate him. Bruh. Think about it. He created him. Apparently he did say in a Daizenshu interview that he didn't like him that much, but he was useful to keep around, but I think since then he's definitely changed his mind. I mean, Vegeta's great character arc throughout DBZ was not an accident. However, the more he's become a main character in Dragon Ball Super, the worse he's got as a character, I'm not gonna lie. But Goku is also a shell of his former self too, so it isn't just Vegeta getting the super treatment, as it were. Bardock went to hell. Most likely Bardock probably went to hell, at least the Z version anyway. He was a cold-blooded killer who likely took the lives of hundreds if not thousands in the name of Frieza's conquest. Saving his son and standing up to Frieza doesn't exactly right those wrongs, but that's why he's a much more interesting character than Super Bardock. I mean, they do kill people in the Granola arc flashback, but he still saves Granola in the end, so this version might not go to hell. I'm sorry, HFIL, my bad. Tier 7 Majin Piccolo An interesting what-if scenario, I guess, in the Buu Saga, considering Piccolo was also once a villain in the Incarnation of Evil, but likely wouldn't really work given Piccolo left his evil ways behind long ago, and not only that, this isn't even really just Piccolo anymore. Remember, by this point he fused with Nail and back together with Kami, so even if you wanted to be evil, it's likely not even possible anymore. Plus, Piccolo, you're my guy, but you were not that strong in this arc, sadly. Turned into a glorified babysitter, really. But apparently this started because of a rumor that this storyline was actually intended, although this was definitely a hoax in my opinion. Female General Blue now I'm not exactly sure what this is talking about, maybe the fact that in the Japanese version, General Blue notably talks like a girl, which is something lost in translation in English, along with the fact that he is very likely gay. And of course there's that very strange penguin village filler scene where Blue is attracted to a 13 year old boy. Yikes. However, I don't think any of this was in the manga and were just random anime inclusions. Mecha Frieza's Bazooka this is a very weird move that Mecha Frieza uses exclusively in the PS2 fighting game Super Dragon Ball Z, which is some sort of rocket launcher, which when you think about it makes no sense, considering he could do way more damage just using Key Blast, but obviously it's for the robot aesthetic, if you will. Creative Products and Solar Entertainment Dubs more dubs, because we're still not done with them, apparently. This one is a rare Filipino-English dub made in the late 90s that was only made of a few movies and released limitedly in Filipino theaters and on VHS home media by a company called Creative Products, while Solar Entertainment is another Filipino dub created for some of the other movies, such as the Broly films. First Time Traveler from Universe 12 this is very obscure lore that I didn't even know about, but apparently the first time machine was invented in the 12th universe by a mortal from an advanced civilization, which ended up in turn creating the first alternate timeline, which is first referenced in chapter 17 of the DBS manga. Fight for Victory Son Goku here we have an unlicensed live-action Dragon Ball film from Korea. It was released in 1990 and is honestly probably the most faithful live-action adaptation of the manga. They even got Oolong and Puar. The Universe Hates Frieza's Race this should be pretty obvious given that Frieza and his father King Cold have ruled over the universe for many years with tyranny and brutality, conquering planets and even using races like the Saiyans to do his dirty work, recruiting other strong alien races to fight in their army, and it's no shock that no one really likes Frieza or his father. It's just that no one was even close to strong enough to stand up to them until Goku showed up. However, it's also been stated by Toriyama that Frieza and his father were notably powerful members of their race, and likely the others are not nearly as strong or as evil as them. Namekians are Kai's Always really liked this theory, that Namekians aren't just some random alien race, but are rather the lowest level of Kais, or gods in Dragon Ball's world. Which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Like how else are these guys able to create wish-granting orbs that summon a dragon? A dragon they create. I mean, Kami himself, like his name, it literally means god in Japanese. Not only that, but he is the guardian of Earth before he becomes once again one with Piccolo and is replaced by another Namekian in Dende. It would also explain a lot of their 
other powers as well, almost godlike healing and regeneration abilities, as well as their design, you know, the pointy ears and antennas. Also explains why Kami and Piccolo know so much, especially about the other world, the Dragon Balls, and even the Kais themselves. Like when Piccolo recognizes who Supreme Kai is before anyone else. It honestly all lines up, and could still go somewhere if Zalama is ever introduced into the story, as many believe he himself is a Namekian, or at least an evolved version of one. DBZ Laser Discs So it seems that most of the DBZ movies actually released on Laserdisc, which is definitely one of the cooler home media releases. However, this format didn't gain much traction, and most of them were only available in Japan, with a select few being brought to the States. Yamamoto's Score yeah, so not only did he work on the music for the DBZ games, but also Dragon Ball Z Kai, which ended up being replaced due to Toei Animation publicly acknowledging his plagiarism scandal. The first 95 episodes of Kai were created using his score, before they were swapped out for Kikuchi's music, but some of the first home media releases still contain Yamamoto's OST. Battle of Gods Original Script Okay, so shout out to Herms for doing a Twitter thread covering the original script so I could go through it here, and trust me guys, this is crazy. So this was first written by Yusuke Watanabe before Toriyama stepped in and drastically altered the story. Originally, the film would take place at Krillin and Android 18's wedding instead of Bulma's birthday party, with the villain, the Beerus in this case, being an evil lizard god that crashed the party. Honestly, the Krillin and 18 wedding idea I'm a fan of and sounds a bit more dramatic than just Bulma's birthday, but I'm glad that Beerus is the way he is now and not some lizard thing. Also, apparently Super Saiyan God was going to be way different, including a beefy, muscular Goku complete with a cape. Yeah, thankfully Toriyama changed that. Bulma Cause Saiyan Saga Fun theory here posted again on Reddit that suggests that maybe in the 5 year gap between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Bulma might have collected the Dragon Balls and wished for a boyfriend that was better than Yamcha, indirectly causing the events of the Saiyan Saga by getting Vegeta to invade Earth. Now this doesn't really make sense given how he only came because of Raditz being killed and hearing about the Dragon Balls through his scouter, and I don't think Shenron would do a wish in such a roundabout way. Plus is he even capable of that? I mean, this is the guy that got killed by King Pig way back in OG Dragon Ball. Goku Jr. Super Saiyan Mistake Yeah, so I touched on this a bit with Pan not being able to go Super Saiyan, because by the logic of her not having enough Saiyan blood, Goku Jr. definitely should not be able to go Super Saiyan, but this could very well just be an oversight. Taiketsu you guessed it, another game, released in 2003 for the Game Boy Advance and made by the same developers as Legacy of Goku. But unlike those games, this one is a pretty standard 2D fighter, and apparently it's pretty bad. Beat is Goku's descendant. Beat is a character that appears in Dragon Ball Heroes and is actually an Earthling and utilizes technology that allows him to become a Saiyan, although he does bear some resemblance to Goku and could just be so far removed from him in the Ancestry line that he lost the Saiyan DNA. He also acts a lot like Goku too as well, and his mom even looks very similar to Chi Chi. Whiskers the Wonder Cat this is another abridged reference and joke, but it actually originates from the Harmony Gold dub of Dragon Ball, where Corrin unironically calls himself Whiskers the Wonder Cat. The more you know. Hey, are you some kind of famous wise man or something? What's your name anyway? I've been told many things. My favorite is Whiskers the Wonder Cat. Dragon Ball AF poster character isn't Goku. Pretty sure I already said this, but yeah, the iconic Super Saiyan 5 Goku isn't Goku at all. And it's the artist's OC, Toblos, and the transformation isn't even Super Saiyan 5, but something called Spirit Killer. Nappa isn't bald. This is something actually revealed to us in Broly, well either he just shaves his head or this is the hair he did have like 40 years ago, and has since lost it by the time he arrives on Earth with Vegeta. But also in an interview with Toriyama, he stated even that Nappa was bald and instead chose to shave his head. Wonder Swan Goku Den 3 Changes Released on the Famicom in 1989, Dragon Ball 3 Goku Den is the third Dragon Ball game released for the Famicom, and was essentially remade as just Dragon Ball, released in November of 2003 for the Wonder Swan Color, which is a console I hadn't heard of until just now. But apparently it's a Japanese handheld made to rival the Game Boy Color. The main notable difference that I could find in this version is that Krillin and Yamcha can defeat Badge's The Mummy. Also it's a card game by the way, in case any of you were wondering. Gekito Tenkaichi Budokai 
Released in December 1992, this NES game is the first fighting style game from the Dragon Ball franchise that also utilized card battles and used a weird NES attachment called the Detached Joint ROM system, which used special cards to add characters and items. Most of this content being accessible only through the use of such cards being scanned into the game. Evolution Piccolo is Zamasu's voice actor. The biggest redemption arc in all of Dragon Ball right here, even more so than Vegeta or Piccolo. James Marsters, the man behind Piccolo in Dragon Ball Evolution, ended up becoming the English voice actor of Zamasu in Dragon Ball Super many, many years later. And what can I say, he absolutely killed it. Amazing job voicing Zamasu. Definitely redeemed himself here. Honestly, some of the best voice work of the entire dub. <laughs> And Frank and Goku story. Wait, what? Yes, this apparently refers to an infamous Dragon Ball fanfiction where Goku travels back in time to World War II and saves Anne Frank from the Nazis and they even fall in love. Allegedly the whole thing was written as a troll, but who knows, people have been known to write weird shit on the internet. Dragon Ball Next Future this is another fan series, this one created by Goji64, that takes place after DBZ but disregards GT. This was all before Super, mind you, but it still introduces Super Saiyan 5 and does equally crazy stuff from what I saw on a fanfiction wiki, such as Nappa going Super Saiyan 2 and Raditz Super Saiyan 3 and even Boo absorbing them. Pretty wild stuff. Dragon Ball AF Mugen Mugen is a fighting game engine, usually with community-made content, that is particularly popular with the Dragon Ball community. Even receiving a Dragon Ball AF game, which features many playable characters in the roster. Frieza's second form can destroy the universe. I think this is a misconception from the subs of DBZ, as well as even from statements uh, from Goku in the manga saying that Frieza is a danger to the universe, even when he is seen in his second form. However, that doesn't mean he can actually destroy it. In fact, Cell can't even destroy it. He's known to be able to destroy the solar system only. Pretty mid if you ask me. So Frieza being able to wipe out the universe doesn't follow the gradual increase in power scaling and just power levels in general. Likely, it was just meant as a threat over time kind of thing, as Frieza was the strongest known threat they had encountered, and he was of course the Emperor of the Universe. And given enough time, he would be able to cause quite a bit of damage. Bulma's mom is an android. Not only would this explain her mom not ever aging, compared to her father Dr. Briefs, but it also makes sense when you consider, at least until Dr. Giro was introduced, Dr. Briefs was thought to be the world's most brilliant scientist. Or maybe he just invented some crazy anti-aging product or something, cause this lady does not age. Abridged even made a joke about Briefs making clones of her in his secret lab basement. Chaozu Mask and Naruto Here's a cool little easter egg I never noticed, and again with the Chaozu stuff, shout out to him man. Probably the most he's ever been talked about in a Dragon Ball video ever before. I'm kidding, but anyway, this is a mask that can be seen in a mask shop in the Naruto manga. Tier 8 US Flag Censorship in Dragon Ball Episode 37, while Goku is on his way to Muscle Tower, he encounters and fights the ninja Murasaki who hides behind an American flag, but in the Arabic version the flag is changed to just look like an old blanket. Belmont killed Jiren's family. Now, they never actually explained who killed Jiren's family or his master, but many theorized back in the day that it was actually the Grand Priest or even Universe 11's God of Destruction, Belmod. However, in my opinion, this seems unlikely because Jiren never got revenge on Belmod, who we can pretty much assume is weaker than him, meaning he could actually kill him if he wanted to and even take his place as a God of Destruction, although he's of course a pride trooper and isn't about that life, I guess. But also, what reason would Belmod have to just kill a few random people? It doesn't really makes sense. Usually a god of destruction just indiscriminately blows up planets and stuff, they don't really just target randoms. Atsumare Goku Wardo Released on an interesting Japanese VHS console that comes with a toy phone called the Terabiko, this is an interactive piece of Dragon Ball Media from 1992 where you can watch an animation and answer trivia questions taking place before the Cell games. Definitely one of the most interesting game entries, I've gotta say. Idainaru Son Goku Densetsu. 
It was at this moment I realized we basically talked about every single Dragon Ball game ever in this iceberg. Anyway, this is another fighting game, surprise surprise, released in 1994 for the PC Engine, and is similar again to the Super Brutoden games. Frontier Enterprises Dub you thought we were done with the dubs? Think again. This time it's a Japanese company based in Tokyo that would dub Japanese films in English. However, as far as I know, the only Dragon Ball thing they dubbed was the film Curse of the Blood Rubies. Although it's hard to come by, so there might be even more out there that we don't know about. Goku's family is the only family to have a last name. Wait, but you've got the Briefs family, right? AKA Bulma's family, the one that owns Capsule Corp, right? Well, actually no, Briefs is her dad's first name, which kind of makes sense because it matches the naming scheme of her family, being underwear puns. But wait, how does Goku's family have a last name? Son? Because his name is Son Goku and they're sometimes called the Son family? I guess so, although it's kind of weird to think about, but it does follow the Japanese naming tradition of reading out the family name first. The World of Dragon Ball Z this is an America exclusive OVA that was produced by Funimation and narrated by Chris Sabat, which goes over the story of Dragon Ball starting with the Pilaf saga, but then strangely skipping to Raditz and early DBZ, up to the Trunks slash Android saga before ending, as this was how far into the dub they had gotten. It's available in the Android saga Funimation releases, as well as the 2001 DVD of Bardock Father of Goku, and Madman Entertainment's DVD release titled Trunks Z warriors prepare. German OST. Couldn't find too much exactly on the German OST of Dragon Ball Z, but I did see the German opening was pretty fondly remembered, so this could be what this is referring to, and I gave it a listen and both of the DBZ OPs are definitely catchy, even though they're just basically German versions of their respective Japanese songs. The Swedish Dub. Dragon Ball wasn't really readily available in Sweden, at least in terms of TV broadcasts, but at least the first 9 movies and the TV specials of DBZ were actually made in the early 2000s and released on home media with a Swedish dub, based on the infamous Big Green dub, which for some reason is pretty common with a lot of these other language dubs. Toriyama has no involvement with Super. This is an interesting sentiment because it's not really true. Maybe he's not directly overseeing the show or the manga, but he does have significant involvement, even more so with the manga, helping Toyotaro along the process. But in regards to the anime, it was stated that he gives them character designs as well as plot outlines, which they can then take and write the actual story and script. Whereas with the recent movies, he completely wrote the script himself. Universe 6 Super Saiyan Multiplier is different. This is really the only thing that could possibly explain the terrible power scaling at work with Universe 6, and even then it's a hard pill to swallow. Mostly this is just some copium, but I can't blame him. Seeing how Goku even struggled a little fighting two Super Saiyan 2s is kinda whack when you really sit down and think about it for a couple seconds, but they threw power scaling out the window a long time ago, so oh well. Also if that power scaling is bad, the power scaling behind Super Saiyan Broly is absolutely ridiculous, bruh. There's no way a Super Saiyan should be able to fight a Super Saiyan God, like that's just crazy. But he is a fan favorite character, so we all collectively just basically face tank it. Goku became Shenron. A lot of people, despite its faults, like the ending of GT, including myself. However, everyone has always wondered one thing about it. Where did Goku go? He was riding on top of Shenron and absorbed the Dragon Balls and then just disappeared. Maybe he actually became Shenron. It would be a pretty poetic ending to the series and its most iconic character. Or was it something more symbolic and it was Goku just finally dying? Well, he appears 100 years later, so maybe not, but this could also just be a ghost, so who knows. Honestly, the part with Goku flying away with Shenron gives me heavy Lord of the Rings vibes. If you know, you know. Scouter Battle Tycon Kamehameha this is actually really cool. I have one of these toy scouters and they're neat, but these are actually a part of a interactive TV video game released in Japan in 2007, and is a real shooter slash first person fighting game. Definitely a cool idea for a TV game. They're all terrible, but at least this one has a cool concept. Statue of Tapion in Blue Dragon In an anime adaptation from 2007 of the game series Blue Dragon, there's an episode where a statue of Tapion can be seen. Fun fact, Toriyama also contributed to this game series. Dragon Ball Evolution was intentionally bad. 
Another great tinfoil hat theory here. Like, it's just so bad that it had to be done on purpose, but why though? Well, it ranges from money laundering schemes to this being made because of and in spite of the writer's strike of 2007 and 2008. And all I can really say is, they tried it, bruh. They really tried it. Quebec dub. Give it up for dub number 15, that's right. Maybe even more, honestly, I've completely lost count. But this refers to a Quebec French dub and broadcast of Dragon Ball Z from September 1999 to August of 2001. Toriyama helped create Bleach. Not only did Toriyama obviously inspire many shonen mangakas, including Kubo, but he also directly encouraged him to keep trying when his original pitch to jump was rejected, which made him keep going and eventually it became serialized and the rest is history. Well, that's at least how the story goes. There's not really any solid evidence that this really happened, but it's a cool story. Dragon Ball Evolution Original Script the original script of Dragon Ball Evolution was leaked and there are quite a few differences in this from the final film. Apparently at least in the script Krillin was mentioned, also Pilaf, Mai, and Shu made an appearance, and even Oolong showed up to fight Goku. And speaking of, Goku even wore his orange gi and used the power pole. However that's not to say this original script was great or anything, in fact it looks just as bad or even worse than what we got in the real movie. Like Pilaf ends up being Piccolo in disguise or some weird shit, and there's still those weird Goku high school scenes. It's all just a mess, really, and there was no saving this film no matter what, to be honest. Super Saiyan 3 is incomplete. Finally, I get to talk about Super Saiyan 3, one of the coolest and most underappreciated transformations in the whole series, and I really enjoy this theory. There's a few different ways to interpret this form and why it looks the way it does. I personally like to think that it's a Super Saiyan transformation pushed beyond its limits, where it was never meant to go, hence the extremely exaggerated hair and look. That also lines up with the fact that it can never be sustained for very long and uses up a ton of energy, which is why Goku no longer really uses it. Also, don't really have another time to show this, but check out the original SSJ3 design by Toriyama. Honestly, kind of like this one more, even as a fan of the SSJ3 we have now. Super Saiyan had blonde hair to save drawing time. Again, this is something I referenced earlier, but yeah, this was done to primarily save time for Toriyama so he wouldn't have to color in Goku's hair. He would later go on to do a few more time-saving techniques as well, such as removing the kanji from Goku's gi, as well as his belt, giving him a standard sash like a lot of the other characters had. GT Transformation 2 Nothing too crazy here. This is just a cancelled sequel to the Game Boy Advance title, GT Transformation, as it never actually finished the story of GT as far as I'm aware, but due to the lack of sales, the sequel was scrapped. Japan Embassy's Letter to Mexico for Illegal Airings so yeah, after the public airings of Dragon Ball Super's last few episodes in Mexico went mainstream on YouTube and things like that, the Embassy of Japan actually reached out to a Mexican governor over this thing, which is just so funny to me. Of course, this was on behalf of Toei Animation regarding their copyright. Like, if they go after YouTubers for just making videos on Dragon Ball, I'm not that shocked that they would go after these watch parties in Mexico. But as far as I'm aware, it's not like they can really do anything about copyright like this in another country. So nothing really came of this. And like I already mentioned before, these watch parties had a great influence on Dragon Ball Super Broly's soundtrack, so massive W here. Tier 9 Z's Alternate Ending this was quite shocking to me, but yes, there is an alternate ending to the Dragon Ball manga, which was released in the Kanzenban release in the early 2000s, and honestly this whole thing reminds me of the extra pages of Attack on Titan. Nowhere near as bad, but it's interesting how much just a few pages can really change the story. So what was different? Well, he added only three new pages. One of the best new things he added was Goku giving Oob the Nimbus Cloud, symbolically passing the torch to him, so to speak. And this part is great, although we have yet to see this really come to fruition because Oob still has yet to make an appearance in the anime, although he does briefly help out in the manga. But the other big change is actually the new final panels in the farewell section, in which Vegeta exclaims that he will surpass Kakarot. And honestly, I'm split on this. On one hand, it sets up nicely 
for Dragon Ball Super and makes his character arc a little less retconned in that show, but on the other hand, it literally undermines everything he said and went through in the Buu Saga, including that epic speech about Goku being number one. Now before Super released, I would say this was definitely a bad inclusion, but with the added hindsight of Vegeta being a major character and still wanting to surpass Goku in Super, I think this actually works fine, and makes his actions throughout Super a lot more understandable, even though it is without a doubt a clear character regression, but that's nothing new for Super, let's be honest. Craft Dinner Disc this is really cool, so apparently as part of some craft dinner box promotion, there was included a Dragon Ball Z DVD in France which had the world of Dragon Ball Z, a Funimation made OVA that has a runtime of 20 minutes. However, the disc of this one says runtime of 60 minutes, so maybe this is a different OVA entirely or includes other extras. Either way, this is one of the rarest Dragon Ball DVDs. GT Live Show Japan has a lot of these live-action stage shows adapted from anime, but this is definitely an interesting pick, I gotta say. It actually acts as a sequel of sorts to the last arc of GT, and has Cell and Frieza coming back with some new, pretty wild forms. But to be honest, though the costumes for the characters are pretty good, the whole thing is just so surreal. Arabic dub had Saiyans summon Ozaru's. Random tidbit about the Arabic dub, but for some reason instead of transforming into great apes, they say the Saiyans quote unquote summon them, which is kind of random. The North Korea dub. It finally comes down to this, the ultimate dub of Dragon Ball, and nothing else comes close. The North Korean dub. I didn't even think this was real at first, but apparently it is, although it's really hard to actually find footage or any info on it at all. But from this comicbook.com article, it seems like it's not just a dub, but rather an entirely new series which includes North Korean propaganda, who would have guessed. The Magic Begins Another unlicensed Dragon Ball film here, and one that I already own in anticipation of possibly reviewing it one day like we did with Super Mario vs. Goku, because this one looks almost as wild. Not quite as crazy, but still, this is a Taiwanese film from 1991 that loosely adapts the manga of Dragon Ball and possibly the first ever film, Curse of the Blood Rubies. Gogeta Destroyed Billions of Souls this is, I guess, a theory because of how Gogeta ended up using the Soul Punisher on Janimba, who was the embodiment of evil created through the evil energy of all those souls trapped in hell. So I guess it does make sense that when Gogeta finally destroys him, all that negative energy and all those possible evil souls trapped within him were also destroyed. But hey, at least the janitor guy survived, shout out to him. Buyu Retsuden Released on the Sega Mega Drive, this is a 1994 fighting game, yeah, you, you get the idea by now with all these games, but this game was a little more well received, being more of the classic fighting game, similar to that of Street Fighter 2. Zamasu retained a pure heart. Despite Gowasu recognizing that Zamasu no longer had a pure heart and pure intentions in Dragon Ball Super, which led to him becoming the villain of the arc, it appears as though he may have actually held very strong convictions about his beliefs in destroying all mortals. I mean, you'd have to, to be capable of the mass destruction him and Goku Black caused in the future, meaning they do not waver in their mission, which is shown in Dragon Ball Fusion, where both Zamasu and Goku Black do retain a pure heart, despite being possibly the most evil evil characters in the history of Dragon Ball, which means Zamasu really believed the whole time that he was the good guy. Resen Jingzo Ningen is a prequel to eradicate the Saiyans. This is true according to the Dragon Ball Wiki, but I'm not exactly sure how that works because this game is just a card battle NES game from 1992 that finishes up the Frieza arc and then goes into the Imperfect Cell stuff. Not exactly sure how that ties in with the plan to eradicate the Saiyans, but yeah. Ika the Legendary Super Saiyan This is another rumored slash hoax character in the Dragon Ball community that was the subject of a lot of fanfictions and art over the years. A female Legendary Super Saiyan which possibly inspired Kale who ended up being just that. Vegeta's I don't think this is talking about Vegeta's sacrifice, the final atonement in the Buu Saga. Rather, I'm pretty sure this is just about an obscure and strange Dragon Ball creepypasta. One of those generic Lost Episode ones, clearly inspired by Squidward Suicide and Dead Bart, all that stuff. Hyper-realistic blood, blank eyes, you know how all that goes. Dragon Ball AF Infinite Dimensions 
This is a mod for DBZ Infinite World. Surprised that game itself didn't appear on the iceberg, but basically it's Budokai 3.5. Really good game. But this is a Dragon Ball AF mod. I had a similar one for the third game actually on my emulator back in the day. Motion Controls Final Bout We already talked about Final Bout, it's already known for being pretty terrible and having bad controls, but in 1997 at a convention in Japan, a tech demo was shown of the game with motion controls that allowed motion sensing technology, letting players perform moves such as the Kamehameha. Maybe if the game actually had this, it would have been saved, but this required a bunch of wires and stuff back in the 90s, so something like this probably wouldn't have been practical. Burst Limit 2 not much to say here, it's just a rumored sequel to Burst Limit that we sadly never got. Which sucks considering how many bad Dragon Ball games there are with multiple sequels, but Burst Limit wasn't one of them. It was like a throwback to the old school Budokai games, and I was a big fan. Red Ribbon Saga GBA this was an announced Game Boy Advance title that never released. The Nintendo World Report article reads, quote, Dragon Ball The Red Ribbon Army Saga follows the memorable adventure of young Goku as he overcomes an entire army to reclaim his grandfather's heirloom, a Dragon Ball. Atari describes it as an action game, but whether it is side-scrolling or overhead is still unknown. Toriyama's 1998 False Death Kind of random, but the Dragon Ball community is no stranger to rumors. This one happened to be quite dark, and likely spread because Toriyama isn't that involved in the public and chooses to keep most of his life private. However, we all know it obviously wasn't true. Tier 10 Super Mario vs. Son Goku an absolute classic. This is a movie I actually already reviewed and talked about, check it out after this if you're interested. But to break down the basics, it's an incredibly strange bootleg film from the Philippines about a scientist guy who can turn into Mario, and eventually Goku as well, traveling into some sort of game world where he encounters other Dragon Ball characters like Krillin and Vegeta, and even Goombas from Mario. It's definitely a strange watch, but a really fun movie all things considered. Possibly the weirdest movie I have ever seen though. Toriyama Disliked Anime Goku This is a pretty well-known thing in the community, so I'm surprised to see it so far down the list. Maybe Toriyama didn't hate Dragon Ball Z Goku, but he didn't agree with a lot of the characterization choices, which are more prominent in the English dub. What am I talking about? Well, Goku seems more like a righteous hero in Dragon Ball Z than Toriyama intended, which he has gone on to say in interviews, saying he never intended Goku to be seen as a hero. He fights for himself and not primarily for others like it seems in the anime. Look back at all of his heroic moments, letting Vegeta live because he wants to be merciful? No. In fact, it was meant to be a very selfish request by Goku because he wanted to beat Vegeta himself. And there are countless other instances of Goku not exactly being the typical superhero, which I am more than fine with that interpretation. In fact, I think Toriyama's vision gives Goku more depth as a character, which is really heightened and explored in the Frieza saga. But what they did with DBS Goku was just a complete disgrace. This is just not Goku, I'm sorry. He's way too dumb, especially in superhero. My man is brain damaged. Like, he doesn't even remember that he meditated before, so I'm sorry. I'll take the cliche yet intelligent martial artist Goku from DBZ over the clown act borderline anti-hero Goku from DBS, who was essentially the villain of the T.O.P., at least for a little while. And don't get me wrong, I still love Goku, and he gets cool moments here and there, but for real, either Kid Buu or Beerus gave this man permanent brain damage or amnesia. Goku and Frieza go to KFC, the movie. Talked about this a long, long time ago in the first ever Iceberg video I ever made on this channel covering fake lost media, so there you go, not actually a real thing, but kind of a hilarious idea. And I mean, they have done a KFC commercial for Dragon Ball in the past, so not too crazy, but an entire movie about Goku and Frieza going to KFC, now that's what the fans want to see. Korean SNES ad. Well, instead of just talking about it, I might as well just show it to you, so here you go. Come on. 
For a little more context, this is the Korean version of the SNES, which is called the Super Comboy, and also there's another one. Enjoy. We killed Trunks and Mai. This is a very dark theory which was posted on the DBZ subreddit that posits that after Zeno erased Future Trunks' timeline, instead of Whis taking them to a different timeline, he rather just killed them because he either doesn't have the ability to take them to this alternate timeline or into the past before Beerus is killed as stated in the manga. I don't really know how it works, I'm not gonna lie, the whole time travel stuff is confusing and paradoxical. But Whis is only able to reverse time by like 3 minutes in Resurrection F, and not only that, he's not supposed to meddle with mortal affairs, but he's also not supposed to be time traveling either, with it being a grave violation of the laws of the universe amongst deities and all that. So maybe he just pretended to take them away and just did away with them in their time machine. Definitely not true, just the explanations given about time travel, especially at this point in the arc, don't really make any sense, so you gotta just kinda roll with it. Super Saiyan Omega. So I'm pretty sure this just refers to a fan-made transformation called Super Saiyan Omega, represented by this symbol. It is acquired, according to a Ultra Dragon Ball Wiki article, by channeling the power of seven Super Saiyan Blue Saiyans in a god ritual, which then unlocks this orange-haired transformation said to be stronger than Super Saiyan Blue, with Goku said to have a power level of 1.4 octillion when using it. Jesus. Cancelled Attack of the Saiyans sequel. Attack of the Saiyans is a Dragon Ball Z game in the West that is known as Dragon Ball Kai Saiyan Invasion in Japan, and was released for the Nintendo DS in 2009 as a turn-based RPG, which adapts the story of the 23rd World Tournament from the end of Dragon Ball as well as the Saiyan Saga. However, a sequel was never produced, and I actually couldn't find any solid info on a potential sequel even being in development, aside from a few Konzenshu forum posts speculating on if any of the upcoming Dragon Ball game releases would be a potential sequel, which turned out to not be the case. Every DBZ box set is personalized. Yep, always gotta end every iceberg on this entry, but for real this time, this is basically true with how many home media releases there are of DBZ and how many of them just suck like, they're either cropped so hard you miss half the show, the colors are blurred or dulled, the grading is completely off. Even in the newest movies that came out a few years ago, even these Blu-ray releases are messed up. I'd expect nothing less of you, Funimation. Never change. And that finally wraps it up. From my understanding, the longest Dragon Ball Iceberg covered here on YouTube, and one of the longest videos I've ever done, even though most of my uploads at this point are at least an hour long. But still, as I said before, Dragon Ball is one of my favorite franchises still to this day, and a huge part of my childhood, so covering this was a lot of fun. And since this series has been going since the 80s, there's even more obscure info and other topics, which weren't even talked about here. So if you've got some other interesting Dragon Ball lore, theories, or crazy trivia, definitely Definitely leave it down below. I'm always curious to learn more about my favorite anime franchise, but this video is already long enough as it is, so let me not ramble on for too much longer. It's been me, Source Brew. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. So take care and peace out.